Hey folks, this is Joe, and what you're about to watch is the video version of one of our draft podcasts, thanks to our Extra Life 2017 donors. Sorry, it's taken so long. This one is on the Sega Genesis, and it was originally posted about five years ago in August of 2014. It's noteworthy because only one on-the-stick regular was involved in the actual draft, and it was me. The panel was rounded out by Ray Barnholt, Greg Seward, and Austin Walker, the last of which being interesting because, at the time, he wasn't yet Waypoint Editor-in-Chief Austin Walker, or even GiantBomb.com's Austin Walker. And, in part because of this, I cut the plugs part of the show out since it felt really out of date. And that being the case, I'm just going to front load them here, and you can find links in the description. Ray is generally a lot quieter these days, but you can still buy all 12 issues of his magazine Scroll at scroll.bg. Greg has changed the format of Generation 16, but still makes episodes. And Austin, well, like I said, he's the editor-in-chief of Waypoint. And speaking of stuff that's out of date, there are a couple references in the audio that are absolutely no longer accurate. First of all, while the 3DS remake of Steel Empire did launch at $30, it's only $10 now, which is much more reasonable. Also, the Wii Virtual Console is no longer online, as I'm sure you know, so anyone wanting to play Musha will have to seek out other methods. Though it was just announced that it's coming out on the Japanese version of the Genesis Mini that's dropping this September. Finally, since I have the luxury of apologizing here, at one point I say that Thunder Force 4, aka Lightning Force, isn't that good of a game. That's wrong, frankly, and what I was trying to communicate, and what I still feel today, is that it is a good game, but Thunder Force 3 is better. Finally, I just want to say that all of the game footage you're about to see was recorded on real hardware, a JVC XI in this case, so enjoy that, and without further ado, let's get to the show. 16-bit arcade graphics. Joe Montana free, Pat Riley free, Buster Douglas free, Super Monaco GP free, or Collins free. What Nintendo? Buy a 16-bit Genesis system between now and October 31st and get an extra game free. I can run down the rules. Why don't you start the show and I'll run down the yeah. rules? Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody. We're on the stick. Woo! Wow. It's been yeah. a long time. <laughs> Back on the stick. Yeah, it's been a long time since we posted one. We've actually yeah. recorded several. Mistakes uh, have been made. Yes. Things have happened. Um, but... Everybody loves it when we do a draft. Those, yeah. are, those are some of the uh, most popular episodes, mostly mm-hmm. for people yelling at us that we picked the wrong stuff. Yeah. Um, well, and I've been threatening to do a Genesis draft without the main panel for a really long time. And yeah. now I'm making good on that threat. Exactly. We have uh, our normal panel is uh, pretty pretty low in experience on the Genesis side of things. So we got in a number of ringers. <laughs> To help us out with that, yeah, we did. Um, so, so I'm Kurt Adam. Um, I am going to be uh, ring mastering this as I did with the Super Nintendo one, since uh, I'm a, I'm a uh, third party, uh, having z- almost no no Genesis experience. Yes, so you have a my, 16 my one bit big, shaped hole in that's your. That's right. Exactly. My <laughs> gaming knowledge. I go all the way back to Pong, and then there's a giant hole in the 16 bit era. So, for those that don't know me, um, and then we also have Joe Drilling. Yes, hey. Everybody knows from the Joe Dreeling Media Empire. (laughs) That's true. And I'm sure everybody knows because they've been watching the summer of Sega uh, on Same Name, Different Game this summer. So they they all know me from that, too, I'm sure. Uh, uh, Absolutely. (laughs) Um, And then, as I said, we have a number of ringers. We have uh, returning uh, returning champion, something, Uh, Ray Barnholt. Hi, everybody. Uh, Our buddy, Ray. Hi, Ray. Cementing his his uh, most favored guest status. Mm-hmm. Um, only but yes, I am my most favorite guest. This is not you. to imply <laughs> that our other guests are not favorable. Um, <laughs> uh, we also have uh, from the Player One podcast and various other things. Uh, the on, most on the internet. Most pertinent to this podcast of the Generation Sixteen uh, video yeah. video podcast is that what it, I, I don't know series, video series? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A series, a vlog in the in the speak of the nineties. <laughs> yes. Um, 
Greg Seward. Hello. There he is. All the way me. from the fans. <laughs> mm. um, and then, uh, last but certainly not least, um, uh, now of Stream Friends, I guess. Yeah, I guess Stream Friends is like the most the most important thing in my, in my resume well at this point. For, yeah, for, formerly of the pre-Sonic Genesis uh, website and podcast. That's true. For I as, was. As, as briefly as that lasted, and I believe you're a PhD candidate. As well. I am a PhD in, candidate in, also. In Genesis. In Genesis. In, in, in Sega the, Genesis. In the field of game studies, so all, that should give me some Genesis. points. Yes. All, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Sega all, himself. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Not yet. One day, so, yeah. My mom true. has been calling me Dr. Sega, and I keep having a corrector. I keep saying, <laughs> let me finish the dissertation first. <laughs> I have to defend my Sega knowledge before right. I can be a doctor. Before a council of Sega experts. The, the dissertation is actually on the Shinobi canon and what <laughs> constitutes, <laughs> what constitutes the canon, right? Canon. What is? <laughs> uh, so, uh, I am happy. Walker, everybody. Thank Austin you. Walker. <laughs> we didn't Thank have you. To say his name. Oh my god. Yeah, he um, should actually say his name if he's Austin honest. Walker. That's that's me. We've doubled the number of Canadians on the. Uh, that's normally on the show. So. I'm an American. I'm just an <laughs> expatriate in Canada. Uh, I'll have you know. Yes, yes. yes. That's close uh, enough. It is. Close. You know, it's, it it's is. cool that it's it's cool that you chose our country. Some of us are lucky <laughs> enough to be born here. You chose it. That's cool. It's true. It's true. Canada awesome. has a very strong center of gravity. And so as people will get closer, they just get sucked they, in. Yeah. I don't think yep. I'll ever escape. I'm a little worried. And uh, and I I grew up close to Canada, and I've seen a lot of their television. So, you know, that, I know so you're you familiar with uh, Degrassi and things like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Nice. The Red Green nice. Show, etc. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Ooh. Okay. I know Lance Storm is obsessed with Corner Gas, but I've never actually watched it. <laughs> I have watched it while I'm obsessed. It's, <laughs> eh. it's all right. Yeah, well, it's a show I watched when I was in it's Canada. No, it's no kids in the hall. It is no, no kids. But in the what hall. is? What is? Exactly. Yeah, it's true. So let's, man, let's get started with uh, so so let's lay down some rules. So we are drafting the Sega Genesis library as we've done in the past so many times, and uh, we're gonna go through a couple of ground rules really quick. We agreed as a unit, firstly, that we are we are uh, containing this to the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive library. So we will not be including the 32X or the Sega CD or the handful of 32X slash Sega CD games that came out. Start drafting uh, your angry emails now. Right. Or, or uh, I guess technically you could play Master System games on the Genesis with, uh, with an accoutrement as well, and we will not be including those either. Nor Mega LD. No, no, yes. <laughs> Very Man, important. That's... That system could play everything. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to include like PC Engine <laughs> games, I think, if we included the Mega LD. Oh boy! Yeah. So when's the PC Engine draft? I, it, it's coming up. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> it's just I, all shooters, is the problem. That's <laughs> that is not a problem. That is not <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's it's it, quote problem. Let's let's put it that way. They're pretty um, great shooters. So. Yeah, actually, I would also like to say that um, everybody I asked to be on this panel, all of my first choices said yes. So thank you, gentlemen, very much for no problem. Wow, consenting <laughs> to this. Um, Ray, so... don't sound so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're shocked that everyone said yes or that you were my first choice. <laughs> <laughs> Just really confused why you would even consider me. <laughs> because every time I listen to, I've been listening to Retronauts like since like episode nine of the original series, ah, yes. and you have always been, like whenever the Genesis comes up, like Parrish and and even Kohler are like, I don't know what the fuck that is, and you're always like, man, let me tell you about the Genesis, and then you're like the the voice mostly, of reason on that show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's mostly just Kohler. He ruins it for everybody, <laughs> and I have to do damage control like every other year. You're like the fireball. <laughs> Right. I love so, yeah. I love Kohler. I don't like. I'm that's not meant to bash Kohler at all. Mm -hmm. It's just that whenever there is like Genesis knowledge, t you know, conversations, you seem to be the one to swoop in there. Plus, you've been on the show before, and we like you, and an audience likes you. So yes, of course. <laughs> I was half kidding. Can I understand? That. Um. So okay. So we're not we're we're leaving out um uh, Sega CD and 32X. There probably won't be a draft for those systems. So I'm just gonna say right now, Snatcher. Okay, then we're done with that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Mm. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. <laughs> Fire and, up your BitTorrents, kids. Right. Uh, yeah. And additionally, uh, we discussed uh, we d we discussed the Genesis six pack cart, and much like the Super Mario All Stars Super Mario World combo cart in the SNES draft, 
The Genesis 6 pack is off the table, so for those who are unawares, that is a combination cart that was packed in with later models of the Genesis, and it had... Separately. Was it sold separately? Yeah, yeah I had okay. it. Okay. You deem it cheating, though. Right. That, it's it's that great still, cardboard box. Yeah. Yes. It's a, it's a way to get way too many picks in one. Right. Track. It's got Golden mm-hmm. Axe, Streets of Rage, Sonic 1, um, Super Hang On, right. Columns, and <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Every, doesn't everything have columns in it? Like, yeah. all games have mm-hmm. as columns. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. This is a thing that I know about the Genesis. <laughs> yeah. Columns is included in everything. And so that we figured that that's that's cheating to pick that because then you get you get four awesome games and two like well you get three awesome games one eh game and two like can take them or leave them games mm-hmm. but, um, too the rich for eh, taking them or leave them uh, eh is like like golden axe like I can enjoy that like if I have a friend yeah like super hang on is like eh eh I think it's a game with a motorcycle. Yeah. Well, if you if you <laughs> like, play it in the arcade, though, it's totally well. Weird. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, if it came with a big bendy uh, motorcycle controller. That would be right. something. But, exactly. Uh, especially in the six pack. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great it's a little, yeah, it's a little yeah. hard to get hold of nowadays, but <laughs> and uh, it's totally worth it. And we also agreed that we were going to leave out imports. We may do a lightning round at the end, as we did in the Super Nintendo draft. But for all intents and purposes. The import, that depends on time and how we feel and everything. But the imports are off the table, uh, generally speaking. So um, it is U.S. releases of the Genesis library. We had a brief discussion about the Sega Channel, and I think we pretty much agreed that it, we're not going to say the Sega Channel. Games that released only on the Sega Channel do not constitute official U.S. releases, I, I think is probably the easiest way to go, because there's weird hair splitting if we're like, well, Wily Wars is okay. But Pulse Man isn't like that's because it's an import that they didn't modify, they didn't change anything when they brought it over. So I'm just I think just saying if it was only released on the Sega Channel, it's it's out. I think is is the decision that does that sound reasonable to to all parties concerned? Yes, and sure. I'm going to guess no one here actually had Sega Channel. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. I, I, I think everyone maybe knew a guy, right? Like. No, I never I never witnessed no. the Sega Channel firsthand oh, ever, and I wanted it so bad because I wanted to play Wily Wars. And and uh, I realized that that was a mistake now, but at the time I didn't know any better. <laughs> Hindsight. Hmm. Exactly. So, um, and then as we've always done before, it's a snake draft. So it's basically for any anybody who's listening who hasn't listened to these in the past. The idea is that it's like if you have a fantasy football or fantasy baseball draft, um, we go one through four, and then four, three, two, one, back to the beginning. So the person who picks last will actually get two picks in a row, and then we work our way backwards. Um, and, and by the end of it, is to to yell at each other when they pick something you wanted to get, pick. And <laughs> right. That's right. that's the fun of the whole thing. Exactly. As so, as I delighted in the screams of pain when I picked Super Mario Brothers three on our NES draft. <laughs> that's right. You picked first on that one. Yep. I, I was like, I'm grabbing this. They're like, damn it. We knew yeah. you were gonna do that. How could it be anything else, really? Right. <laughs> that, well, this yeah. is my point. Yeah. So. So I think I think that that takes all of the. Is there anything that I forgot to mention, or anything I need to clarify for the panel, or you think for the audience potentially? Anybody? Uh, four minutes. Oh yes, right. Minute to choose. You got a minute to four choose. Four minutes to extol the virtues of your of your pick. Right. Um, so if you as we usually do, people will chime in and say right. yay so, or nay or whatever. Yeah, so this hasn't this has very rarely happened, but I will point out if you if you spend your minute and you don't make a pick. The next person gets to pick, but then it goes back to you. You don't miss your turn. You just lose it for one, like, so, you know. Mm-hmm. You just drop in the priority. You just drop in the one, priority. One slot. One yeah. slot. For that, for that round. Yeah, that has <laughs> never happened in the, mm-hmm. like, three drafts we've done. So. <laughs> but, in case. But, it's... there's a rule. We have it. That's right. We have it, so. Well, so, that committed to be anarchy, right? So. That's, that's right. right. That's right. So, <laughs> Kurt is, as ringmaster, as head cat herder. Uh, has the stopwatch as well. So correct. My my uh, my timer ends on an old car horn. All right. So we, no. you get to go until the auga. And we are okay. not we're not super strict about that. You know, if you're if you have your thought, we're not going to cut you off in the middle. But that's sort of a okay. Wrap it up. Right. So you're yeah. not going to play us off or anything yeah. like that. No, no. We're not gonna put you out of the call or any of that stuff. So. No. 
no. But the idea is... We have fun discussion, but just keep it moving. Is the point. Yeah, we don't want to be here for four hours. Um, so, yeah, I think that's everything. So I guess, Kurt, you can... So I, I drew random numbers via random.org for everybody, um, and I have not informed everybody of when their choices are, so this will be fun. Uh, so first, first up is Greg. Word. Uh-huh. So he gets his first pick, and he is now on the clock. Oh, oh well, uh, pressure. Uh, this isn't going to take long. <laughs> Streets of Rage two. God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Draft success. There we go. You're also going to hear a lot of that, listener. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th- what is there to say about that game, right? That hasn't been said already. It's like the pinnacle of the, the beat em up, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm surprised it went first, though, because I think all of the, the, common, the common wisdom is that beat em ups don't really hold up as well as some other genres. You know what, though? Sure. For me, this one does, because I've played, I've played through this millions of times, and I, I could pick it up at any time and have tons of fun with it, multiplayer or single player. I mean, it's just, it's it's such a perfectly balanced, beautiful sounding, looking game. Like, it's just easily the best thing on the system for me. I, I, it's hard for me to disagree with any of that. It's <laughs> especially the sound, like the soundtrack is so like if you if you didn't know if you were in a noisy nightclub and one of the songs from Streets of Rage came on and you didn't know it was from a video game, I would wager that you wouldn't know it was from a video game. That's Absolutely. how good that soundtrack is. Yep. Hmm. Um, is it is that the one that got a remake? a while back well so streets of rage remake is really like kind of all three of them like i was gonna say it was into... a frankenstein yeah. thing together yeah yeah plus but some some new content too i'm pretty sure yes yes yeah i think so yeah i mean and streets of rage 3 was uh, was good as well and i i only ever experienced the american version which is apparently much harder than the mm-hmm. japanese one and it turned me right off i've never really given that game much of a chance outside of the couple times i played it back in the day yeah, I agree. So. Streets of Rage three. One one is like a blueprint for one. It's, it almost seems like I don't think this is the case because of how close they came out to each other. But Streets of Rage one almost seems like it is an intentional fuck you to Capcom and Nintendo. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and then Streets of Rage two is like refining that into something that's really super <laughs> awesome and not just like a spiteful middle finger. <laughs> Streets of Rage one was like that game that all the magazines ran side by side with Final Fight, <laughs> and especially with move lists, right? Like you had you have punch, 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 and uppercut in Final Fight, and then you've got like forty moves in Streets of Rage. So. Right. Yeah, and Streets of Rage One. (laughs) Streets of Rage One is still an an interesting game. The soundtrack is still excellent. You can summon in a police car that has a rocket launcher on it. Like that's, (laughs) uh, you know, you you learn the origins of of Adam, the guy that goes missing in Street in Streets of Rage Two. So uh, you know, I I still think it has a place in my heart. But Streets of Rage Two is the game. Yes. What I actually find most disappointing is that Adam is my favorite Streets of Rage character. Same. Same. That (laughs) until Streets of Rage Remake, I could not play. Streets of Rage 2 with Adam in, in effect. You skate. Skate is that's not the same. Not the same. It's not, not the same. same. Not at all. Come on. Yeah. Not the same. Um, uh. Yeah, I'm surprised that went first, but I do not fault you because man, that game is super great. That made my whole night. I don't even care what else I get now. God damn it. That was also my top pick. So that was my, I was sure other Jeez. games would go first and I'd be able to sneak in my Sheets of Rage 2 love. And, nice. But like, uh, the, we'll see. I'm probably going to get something that's technically rated higher on, on other lists. We'll see. Well, I, you know, it, it was definitely on my list, but it was not my number one. And now I'm hoping that I'll be able to sneak my number one because I assumed what is my number one would be everybody's number one. So, we'll see, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I can't wait to hear your number one. Uh, okay, well then you can, because Joe is next. Oh, cool. Well, that's easy. <laughs> it's Gunstar Heroes. <laughs> nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's my one and only pick. <laughs> good pick. Joe, Wait, I, Joe gifted it to me in our Christmas exchange, and that was the first time. It was a game that I knew about, I knew of, I'd never gotten around to playing, and so that sort of forced me to do it. And I was like, man, this game's great. 
It is so great. Um, you never played any of the other games that were in that in that package? Because to not be a cheapskate, I should point out that I gave Kurt like the whole Genesis <laughs> collection on Steam because it was on sale, and buying him one game for like seventy five cents oh. for a Christmas gift seems really fucking lame. <laughs> so I even just, though it's a really great fucking even game. though it's a really great fucking game, so I ponied up and got like the whole the whole thing. But uh, yeah, so so uh, uh, Gunstar Heroes is like. It's the best Genesis game, in my opinion, and I I am surprised it wasn't the first pick. Um, it it is everything that I love in a video game, <laughs> essentially. Like okay, Contra yeah. for the NES is probably my all time favorite game. Okay. Um, and even though there is a Contra game on the Genesis, which is totally fucking great, I actually think that Gunstar Heroes is like uh, a better realization. Of, of like the evolution of Contra and the run and gun shooter, I would and, agree with that. Yeah, and and it's just like the whole the weapon system and like I talked about it a lot at Christmas time because we did our Christmas gift exchange like we do every year and, and so since I gave it to Kurt I talked about why I love it so much. Um, but it's just like ah, uh, it's it's gorgeous. Like it's still gorgeous. Like still playing it now, I'm like I cannot believe a Genesis is making this game. It looks so good, especially since the. The uh, the common wisdom is sort of that the Genesis was was like a Super Nintendo but uglier, as far as the graphics were concerned. <laughs> uh, um, and and you know I thumb my nose at the common wisdom, but like the Gunstar Heroes, it's bright, it's colorful, it's it's frantic. There's a million things happening on screen. Well, uh, it definitely shows that you know maybe some people thought it was like Super Nintendo but uglier, but it's also faster than the Super Nintendo, and that really shows that in Gunstar Heroes. And right. really, a lot of the treasure games, really, yeah, because it's like this super fast arcade action. When you when you look at like uh, look going back and look at the games nowadays, like twenty years after the fact, too, <clears throat> I was reminded recently about like how insane everything that uh, Treasure and Konami really was doing on that system. Like when Konami and Treasure came on the scene on the Genesis, like they started doing things with that console that you just did not think it could do. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, as far as uh, scaling and rotation and even things like more like CG looking 3D graphics and just amazing stuff. You look at it now, you look at a lot of the games from those two companies now compared to everything else. And, and you can always tell when you're looking at one of their games. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They they did. And it's so sad that Konami and, and Capcom officially, um, you know, took so long to get on board the Genesis mm. bus because they did... Uh, really great things, you know, with with the hardware. Uh, as as did, I mean, Sega, of course, did like the majority of the heavy lifting because uh, they didn't have a ton of third party support to start. So we, they worked a, a lot of magic, as is the case with Streets of Rage, of mm-hmm. course. And they published, um, you know, all the treasure games on uh, on the. Uh, they published a lot of uh, treasure games on the Genesis. In fact, they might have published them all. Now that I'm thinking about it, in the U.S., they think they definitely did. Okay. Did they publish sure, McDonald's yeah. Treasure Land Adventure or whatever that, that was? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they had to get that. <laughs> Big money right there. Yeah. Well, what's weird is that, like, they... Because, yeah, when they re-release the games, it's usually Sega who's... They must still own the publishing to all that stuff. Because, like, Dynamite Hetty is on the Sonic Ultimate Genesis collection, even though, like, Alien Soldier right. and Gunstar Heroes are not for some reason. So. Yeah, they do definitely seem to own the rights for a couple of games, whereas Treasure owns most of the other ones. Like, for example, Guardian Heroes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I think when that... Yeah, I mean, they, they released those in the U.S. as well, didn't they? But I think that's when Treasure started publishing their own stuff through ESP in Japan, right? So mm, Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Time. Okay. All right. Uh, and now it is Ray. Okay, great. Well, uh, awesome first of all... That's, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I set my own little rule that I wouldn't pick any arcade ports, so I'm going to go original here. Okay. And uh, also going to pick some things that I'm for sure will put me in loser's bracket. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. And on that You're note, a winner my, in our heart, Rick. <laughs> yes. On that note, my first choice is Crusader of Senti. Nice. Which is the best Zelda ripoff that is better than Newtopia 2. Wow. 
Nice. Uh, yeah. It's just, uh, it, it's a fun little game. It does definitely take a lot from Link to the Past, but it has its own little original touches to it. And uh, its own little fun little world and a silly cameo by Sonic. But uh, other than that, uh, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I remember just buying it on like a Friday and beating it throughout the whole rest of that weekend <laughs> when it first came out. And that's the game that's like Zelda where the main character loses their ability to speak to humans and then gets like a bunch of animal buddies throughout the game. Yeah, basically, yeah, you do get a bunch of different uh, yeah, animal companions that have their own little special powers and that sort of act as, you know, your special abilities. <laughs> right, and they'll right. help you, with, you know, beating bosses and things. And there are, like, large bosses, again, like in Zelda that you can fight. And, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, the music is not, like, spectacular or anything, but it mm-hmm. is kind of kind of quaint, I think. I think the whole game is really just quaint. But, uh, yeah, it, it really was just, like, an interesting... Uh, take on that sort of Zelda formula. I uh, I have never played that game. Yeah, I've known about it for years, and I don't think I've ever turned it on either. Now I feel like I have to though, because you yeah. compared it to Link to the Past, so I feel like <laughs> I, now I need to play it. And he picked right. it for his well, top pick. That's his number one. Yeah, pick. yeah. So. Yep. That is one of my favorite Genesis games. And it, what's weird is that it was published by uh, Sega in Japan, but Atlas in North America. So, yeah, I guess it has like Sega. three different names as well. <laughs> yeah, it's all three different names based on the different regions. Yeah, uh, it's called Soleil in Europe and right. sure. uh, Shin so- Yeah, Shin Soseki, Soseki Ragnacenti in uh, in Japan. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks really it, it, like visually, it looks really good, but it also <laughs> looks like something I want to play, not visually. But you know what I mean. It <laughs> yeah. Looks good. It looks good, and it looks good. Is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Tastes great, oh. less filling. Right. Yes. <laughs> there was a really good uh, uh, speed run of it during the most recent Awesome Games Done Quick. That was a blast to watch because some of the speeds that you can get your your character up to in that game are just incredibly fast, uh, and that's yeah. always like the fun type of speed run to watch, where where you can just feel the rules being broken. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. And because of all the the animal companions, there's a lot of sequence breaking that you can do um, if you know how to like use their abilities in different ways, which is cool. Yep. And yeah, the speed itself is just another good testament to the speed of the Genesis. Speed of the Genesis. Yeah, saying, it's, yeah, that's it right there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, and now Austin gets his two picks. Oh, this is tough because I've back to back, which means I can do, I can make power plays here, right? Like yeah, I can. Yeah. This is the it. Cat, the fabled cat yeah. seat. I'm real. in the captain seat. I could now. Uh, <laughs> really block off certain other plays. Um, but I can also follow my heart and and pick the things that I'll say God damn it to if they go for a long time before this comes back around to me. I think I'm going to split the middle, so I'm not going to do the, the mean thing. I'm just going to take Sonic 2. Here for my first pick. <laughs> uh, Sonic 2 is a great game. I don't think anyone was surprised to see that that goes for someone's first draft pick. Uh, I I don't know that I like another platformer as much as I like Sonic 2. Um, and I know that that's sacrilege. I know that I, you know, I had a lot of fun with Super Mario World. I had a lot of fun with Mario 3. I love those games. But nothing... There's no platformer I'd rather play right this second than Sonic 2. Um, and a lot of that goes for what we were just talking about with Senti, that it's about the speed and the the sound and kind of like the hallmarks of the Genesis are all there in Sonic 2 for me. Um, and I think that's 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 you know my little bit of a love letter to Sonic 2. I I say I say unequivocally that Sonic 2 is the best Sonic game in my opinion. Like I agree without question. Um, I know people love Sonic 3 uh, and and love what Sonic and Knuckles does with Sonic 3 uh, but I just can't go with them all the way there I, you know. hmm. am I weird for liking Sonic 1 the most? no 
No, I no. no I'm not going to hate you for it. I want you to tell me I'm not weird. I want you all to tell me. Uh, uh, no, I Greg, I think it's Greg, weird. You're not. <laughs> no, it's it, that is weird. <laughs> no, we're going to tell him. It's that. not. Well, we, yeah, we can tell. Okay, we'll tell, tell him. Yeah, lie to him. Weird. We're going to wait for him to go to the bathroom and be like, yeah. that's totally weird. Yeah. That is so that guy. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, I like all three of the original Sonic games mm-hmm. and Sonic and Knuckles, uh, even like just by itself, Sonic and Knuckles. Sure. But I but, but I, I think that Sonic 2 is the peak of Sonicdom. I think it's a lot yeah. like Mega Man. Like, mm-hmm. most people mm-hmm. agree on 2, and then... But I, I personally like three just has more of an epic feel, and that applies to both <laughs> Mega Man and Sonic. <laughs> so that's fair. Yeah, that's totally yeah. that. I get three, and, and in a lot of ways, three represents. I mean, so two is already a shift towards really developing it as a franchise. But in three, when you introduce Knuckles as a character, it's even bigger than when you introduce Tails in two. In terms of like, all right, we're getting a whole big cast of characters. So I get why people would make that decision. But for me, two keeps it. It's like the happy medium where. It's still straightforward, you know, platforming levels. There's not that many, like, little cutscene things. I'm not supposed to care too much other than, like, I really want these Chaos Emeralds. And I, I'm just going to constantly... Yeah, I, I think it also has the the best uh, bonus stages, the, the half-pipe-style bonus stages. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. yeah. I kind of like Sonic 1's bonus stages, even though they're a little nauseating. I, I still enjoy them. <laughs> those things are so bullshitty. I hate those fucking... The, the rotating... Uh, world things. I, I uh, with the ugh. flying backgrounds. Yeah, Dude, I, I like the I like the MC Escher backgrounds, but that's about <laughs> it. as far as I'll go. All right. Uh, Next, my second pick. So this is where if I I think if I was being the worst human, I would <laughs> I would now grab either Sonic Three or Sonic and Knuckles, which I think takes like a whole chunk out of Sonic and Sonic uh, Three, in, in a sense. Um, but instead, I'm gonna follow my heart. And I'm going to say flashback. Oh, I hate you. Uh, (laughs) That was my next pick. (laughs) Flashback is super good. Oh Uh, my god, that's such a great game. Flashback is why I like cyberpunk, probably. Um, you know, you spend that first 45 minutes to an hour, like kind of figuring out things and going to that jungle area. And then it's one of those games where after you get through, first of all, that jungle area is an amazing tutorial. Uh, one of those like great yeah. tutorials of the era where you're not, it's very little is like told to you. And it's very much, you're figuring out the systems and being taught through challenges, how to use all the, all the, the game systems and mechanics. Um, and then you fall down that shaft and you have like your hover belt and you get your memories back from your friend. And you get this like cool, what at the time felt incredibly cinematic cutscene, uh, wow. And then it's, it opens up into what at the time felt like this massive, again, cyberpunk world. It's like, gritty sci-fi i'm gonna go do odd jobs around this place i'm gonna end up being in a uh, uh you know a, a blood sport game show uh, it ends up going in basically the running man it's basically the running man oh, right for sure it's total uh, recall in the running man all put together it, yes absolutely right. uh and i have a good place in my heart for those things and, yes. and had to snatch that up yeah i i so i played a little bit of this last night in fact and it was it was on my list to, to consider and i kind of figured someone would snatch it up before i did but it, like, playing all these old Genesis games, and this one in particular, like, made me really um, want to go back and experience more of that 80s sci-fi aesthetic. So last night when I went to bed, I turned on Total Recall, like, nice. in bed, because I played so many of these games. And, like, yeah, I, I agree. Like, between Flashback, like, Flashback and Snatcher, I experienced around the same time. I saw Blade Runner the first sure. time, you know, around that time, because I was about 11, 12 years old. Wow. Um, so like all of that stuff, I started playing Shadow Run, like the yep. board, the pen and pen paper Run. game. Yep. And then the Genesis game came out, which I'm sure that will probably come up in more detail later. I wish uh, you hadn't uh, mentioned uh, Now it's uh, already. Uh, oh. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but all of that stuff happened for me, like in the same probably one or two year span. So it just like this was one of the games that got me super into cyberpunk. And I still love cyberpunk aesthetic and, and cyberpunk things like the the um, the cyberpunk game that that the Witcher team is supposedly yeah. still working on. Like, I'm so excited for that. <laughs> so excited for that. Um, and yeah, flashback is just like it looked like you said, like it looked like like 
it was almost like I had to remind myself last night as I was playing it, watching the opening cutscene where Conrad is running away from mm-hmm. the bad guys and stuff that I was like, this isn't impressive now, but in like 1993 or whatever, like this was, this blew my fucking mind. It's, it's funny too. I was just going to bring that up because like I, I played the, I played the Sega CD version recently and the Sega CD version and the, the 3DO version as well. And they have full motion video cutscenes and they're not as good. There's something, there's something about the stuff on the cartridge, like just the, the whole sort of rotoscoped, um, very low poly model idea. It just, there's, it's got so much charm and it fits the game so perfectly. Uh, yeah, it's so like, it's so great. Yeah. And, uh, that's also, the other, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, the, the other thing I would say is that the Genesis version of Flash, Flashback was released on like 8 million systems. And, mm. and for my money, the Genesis cartridge version is the best version of Flashback. Yeah. Yeah. Last thing for me is, it, you know, you play as a guy wearing jeans and like a leather jacket and that's a tiny thing, but in it, it was one of those like everyman characters and young Austin hadn't seen that that much in games. <laughs> We're like, here's a person. He's like, he's just a guy. Okay, cool. I can, I can relate to that. Like I could be the guy who loses his memory and et cetera. You know, early power fantasy, you know, that's. So he's like proto Nathan Drake. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Listen, if, <laughs> if, if that flashback remake had been any good, he would have been a lot more like Nathan Drake. And I'm not even like a big Nathan Drake fan, but that could have happened in a different world where Naughty Dog say, made yeah. the new flashback game. So I didn't play the flashback remake, but I heard it was like just total hot shit garbage. Is that is that accurate? Yes. That, you heard right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's unfortunate. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Okay, time. All right, uh, now we're back to Ray. All right, here we go. Toe Jam and Earl. Good pick. Choice. Good. One, yes. One of the best co-op games I think I've ever played. Um, used to rent it a lot and just play with friends. And then finally, just bought it. I think even used and even then, I was just like, oh boy, finally, I have it and I can play it whenever. And uh, yeah, it's still one of my top favorites. Um, you There's know, nothing it, it, else like Toe Jam and Earl. No, absolutely no. not. Because you know, co-op in games, whether you know now or even back then, I think we're so much about being close together a lot or on the same screen or whatnot. Yeah. But here, you know, you're actually encouraged to go split up and the screen splits along with you <laughs> and you have to go and, you know, search out the, the map and find the exit at least. And then also the, the, the spaceship parts that are supposed to help you, you know, get the good ending and, and, and such while also, you know, not dying. And you can also get these presents and some are random and they may help you or hurt you a lot. And, you know, they might just pitch you off a cliff or they might give you some life or <laughs> poison you or whatnot. So it's, it does get a little bit madcap and that, that also really helps. I think because it was also just like there wasn't really much else like it at the time. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, it did sort of like play into Sega's image, at least in America. You know, it's sort of like the <laughs> the cool kid hip hop game company uh, for a little bit there. Um, so I, th- I think that's 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 my opinion in a nutshell. It, uh, the, it uh, the, so the total bummer is the most appropriately named item in any video game ever uh-huh. i think um <laughs> the worst thing though is when you you have all these presents and you know what they all are and you've got one that's a question and you rather than wait till you see the wise man in the carrot suit you just yep. open it and it's a fucking randomizer and all your hard work figuring out what all these <laughs> yep. what all these presents mm-hmm. are but i'm really glad you mentioned that because speaking of our christmas video game exchange the first year we did a christmas game exchange I gave Mike, our Canadian friend, Mike, Toe Jam and Earl, and he fucking hated it. And well, I was like, what wait, is wait, wait, wrong wait, 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 with you? Canada's from? Montreal. Oh, well, that explains it. <laughs> he's not, but, but, but he's not French-Canadian. Let's, oh, let's, let's no. clarify that. He, is a, he lives in Montreal, it. but he's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the other thing there that, that Joe just touched on with the randomizer <laughs> stuff and the unidentified presence stuff is that, like, you could have taken that sentence and... It would have sounded like out of context that you were talking about NetHack, right? Like Toe Jam and Earl yeah, true, yeah. is a- 
absolutely a game that would today we'd argue whether or not it was a, a real roguelike, and it absolutely is. Um, uh, and I never introduced thought about me that. to that mm-hmm. style of yeah. gameplay in a way that primed me later to love games like Sheer and the Wanderer. Um, I would have never been into that if I hadn't already been screwed over by unidentified <laughs> items in Toe and Earl when I was a kid, you know? Like, well, so, that's what so, so, yeah, that's how, what happens. How can right. I not mention the sound effects, though? Oh, good call. The, I mean, the whole the best the, part of the game. And the soundtrack and the whole, like, it's so catchy. Like, I have that main theme stuck in my head right now. When you when when Cupid is floating across the screen and you just hear him going la la la, <laughs> all that stuff is just like mm-hmm. it's the best yeah. thing ever. Or it's uh, also a nice dentist. morning beacon, right? Yeah, right. the boogeyman <laughs> who goes boogie boogie mm-hmm. boogie. <laughs> <And like this. laughs> Aloha. <laughs> I love also when you read when you open the school book and it puts you to sleep and you have to mash the buttons to wake your character up and it <laughs> yeah. starts off with a whisper it's like wake up wake up yep. wake up yep. wake so up nice. and then yeah and, and but every like it's just the weirdness I think my favorite thing about Toe Jam and Earl is that the the weirdness of the whole thing mm-hmm. doesn't feel put on like it feels like the people who made this game were just genuinely fucking just weird. Dead. Yeah, <laughs> like Santa Claus with a jetpack, and the wise man in the carrot suit, and the mm-hmm. opera singer who explodes everything, and the giant hamster in a plastic globe, and like all of that, like the, like the. Yeah, if you ask the, them why, they just like, be like, "Well, why? Why not? Why not?" Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you, there's an elevator that magically takes you up to different levels, which is it's ostensibly Earth, but it's just like an island floating in space. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just all so bizarre, and it's so. The mailbox monster, like everything about it. It's yeah. just like it's, it's like of its era MTV cartoons. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like liquid it's television. So cleanly, or, yeah, right into liquid television. Exactly. Well, I mean, with the, the, the backgrounds with the geometric shapes and everything, yep. too. Like, just. And there's a beatbox mode. <laughs> yes. You can just go in and right. mash buttons to beatbox, uh, which is. Ah, it's I love yeah. that game so much. And, and what's sad is yeah. there are two sequels, and neither of them yeah. are that good. Okay, time. Back to Joe. See, there's the horn. Oh, there was the horn. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, that's gone. I should take that off the list. Uh. Oh man. Um. Ah, oh, Jesus. This is hard. Uh, Sounds like it's hard. Keep it is. 30 seconds. Yeah. Shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because on the one hand, a lot of stuff that I was thinking of is already gone, but on the other hand, a lot of stuff that I was thinking of is still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, is 50, I guess. It's either on your list or it isn't. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Ah, uh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> Castlevania Bloodlines. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> if you if That's... you say so. Wow. Controversial. What? No, no. Wow. I mean, I, I mean, I wanted it. I oh, okay. All right. <laughs> it's just <sour> grapes. <laughs> yeah. it's the, the sound of Nova Scotian sour grapes. Yeah. So, <laughs> Castlevania Bloodlines, um, aside from being the precursor to the kind of mediocre Portrait of Ruin, um, Castlevania Bloodlines is one of my favorite. I believe the the term we use now is vintage vania is what a lot of people have adopted. Uh, Wait, no, people use that to. Uh, I've heard it used to describe a... That might displace a... shmup in my, <laughs> in my hated vocabulary. Oh. Nope. nope. None of it. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the the non-Metroidvania Castlevanias, uh, it, it's one of my favorite. And I know that Super Castlevania Four is fantastic. And I know that, that uh, Dracula X for the PC Engine CD and not for the Super Nintendo is fantastic and I and I know that Castlevania 3 is fantastic but Bloodlines I really like Bloodlines and it's not just because it ends with like new wave post punk Dracula with spiky orange hair and a like purple suit um, Are you sure? Because that's a good reason <laughs> That's a good yeah, reason really, I, That's not a downside <laughs> But it's not the only reason um, 
the fact that you have two characters, I think what I really like is that is that playing as Eric Lacard is sort of a revelation, and not in the same way that, like, in, in Castlevania 3, you could play as Grant and, and Sifa and Alucard, like, part-time, but you were always Trevor. At, and they the always part. felt like, those characters always felt like they weren't really all that rounded out. They were right. just kind of, yeah, they were yeah. there. Right, it was like it was like, well, you pick Alucard so you can use his bat transformation in this particular situation. You mm. pick Grant so you can use the wall climb in this particular situation. You choose Sifa in this, like that. But like picking Eric Lacard is like that's you're playing the whole game as a dude who doesn't have a whip, and so it it becomes different. Right. Um, and the level design is really great, and it's not just in the castle, um, which I like a lot. Which I mean, there were other games that had done that, but. Not really as many, and still really not that many, have gone that far outside the castle. But Bloodlines is like a romp across the European countryside, and then at yeah. the end, like the last stage, is the castle. Yeah. Um, Wasn't it like the first one to take place in the 1900s? Or yeah, way off? It, yeah, yeah. No, I, it, yeah, it's uh, like 1901 or something, right? The Pandora's it's, box. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, just under the wire. But yeah, it's like sort of like, you know, it has like zeppelins in it and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, well, yeah, no, it's it's post World War One, isn't it? Cause don't you go to an, you go to a munitions factory in Germany that's like staffed by army skeletons at one yeah. point. So yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's like nineteen <laughs> teens or early twenties or something. The, but that sort of fits in with the with the other thing that I think of when I think of that game. And I mean, when you talk about Castlevania, you always talk about the soundtrack. Oh yeah. But um, that that soundtrack, as far as Castlevania games went back in the day, was really different. I mean, it's still got the same sort of tunes but mm -hmm. they're all very modernized like it, it it was a real shift i think not only from the setting but also from a music standpoint um and i wasn't that the same composer that ended up going on and doing symphony of the night as well i believe it was yes, yeah so it kind of set the stage for mm -hmm. for what castlevania music became like it was he an evolution is, of it michihiro yamane yeah okay. she did uh, castlevania 2 i think I'm sorry michihiro. sure and uh, yeah um but i also like that if you do pick uh Jonathan Morris, or what, Jonathan Morris, right? He's uh, or John Morris. He um, yeah. he uses a whip. He uses the vampire killer whip, but he can. So in Castlevania Four, you can swing from certain like rings, but Jonathan Morris can just whip onto any ceiling and swing like Indiana Jones. Um, and it's not as fully like you don't have as much control as you do in Castlevania Four, but it's still a really cool feature that you can just like whip onto just about any ceiling and and swing like Indiana Jones, uh, if you choose him. Uh, time. Yeah. All right. So Greg has been being tortured for <laughs> an half. Yeah, now man. he finally gets another pick. Flashback and Castlevania both gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was all, he was all proud of himself. The stop Sweet being fun rage. 12 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second pick. I'm going to have to go with Road Rash. Wow, and not Road yeah. Rash 2. Yeah. I, no, I don't wow. know what it is about that. Maybe maybe I'm just weird. I just like the original games more than the sequels for some reason. But, yeah, I mean, I think the two are pretty much interchangeable, to be honest. Um, and that game, when I first played that game, I didn't know anything about it. Um, I actually found it used. It's like, oh, motorcycle racing. That looks kind of neat. And then you, I played it, and I was just <laughs> blown away. It's like, oh, my God. Like, not only, not only is it... Um, is the engine really impressive? I mean, you know, you it played racing games before on the Genesis, but this one has like rolling hills and all that stuff as well, which you didn't really see a lot of. Um, but then the fighting aspect of it too is just such a great game. It's so much fun. If um, it was a porno, it would be this ain't super hang on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, good. but it, but it's true, and and like there's so many cool little touches too. Like there there is a little bit of uh, an AI at play there, where like the 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 other riders would remember how you treated them race to race, which I always thought was really cool. Like there were certain riders out there that would always attack you if you got near them, but if you noticed, there were some that just raced you unless you hit them first. And then in the next race, they would actually attack you when you got near them. Yeah. It was just cool little touches like that all through that game. That game was the game was brilliant, and it's such a shame that EA has let that series die. 
Um, I mean, they tried to kill it on the N64 pretty well, but <laughs> but you know, like the first three games and the 3DO game as well, and the one th- that was also released on the PS1 and the, the Saturn, like just incredible games. Yeah, and 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 I think a two is my personal favorite. And did anybody besides me have the issue of EGM that had the Road Rash Two hologram like stuck on oh, the yeah. cover? Yeah, I still got that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I that yeah. I I actually didn't put that game on my list because I was I guess maybe until you just started talking about it, I didn't remember how much I loved it. But <laughs> um, I, Road Rash Two especially, and then the PlayStation One, the, the one that was, the three D O one that then became the PlayStation One. Right. Um, that had a kick-ass soundtrack, by the way. <laughs> um, Rusty Cage. Yes. Yes. Is no one going to bring up uh, Skitchin? I was. Oh, I didn't, man, well, Skitchin. I got yelled at for bringing up Shadowrun, so I. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I, I. I still love Skitchin. Skitchin is not as good as Road Rash, but it's it is not. kind of. You know, it's. It yeah. is, I wouldn't have liked Skitchin as much if I hadn't hadn't you know, uh, started off on Road Rash. I think. I think. I was ready to move on to the the wild world of skating and holding onto the back of cop cars. Road Rash sold that game. <laughs> it did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but in the other thing too with Road Rash, I always found like which you didn't get credit for was that there's this there's, there's a level of progression in that game. I mean, like you're constantly trying to build up money to to buy new parts for your bikes right. or buy new yeah. bikes, and everything gets faster and harder, and and then you have the police chase involved too, which I hate police chases in, in driving games now, but back then it was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I get another pick now, do I? You do. Uh, we didn't okay. say this at the beginning, but you do not actually have to fill four minutes, you know, if you if you wax Rhapsodic for two and you've said you're <laughs> yeah. you can move on, you don't have to so far it's like some. So far, it's uh, you say something for two minutes and then Joe goes on for another two. <laughs> yeah. It's about, Sorry. It's about the Sorry. Um, I'm going to have to go with uh, Shining in the Darkness. Huh. Which I didn't think anyone else would pick, but yeah. Um, so this was actually the first RPG from Climax on the Genesis. Might have been the first RPG from Climax, period. But uh, it's a dungeon crawler, which I normally hate, and I absolutely love Shining in the Darkness. Um, it's got this. It's got a great engine. It looks gorgeous while you're playing it. The the enemy design is really nice. Um, it's got a party system that I really dig. And uh, it's got that great climax character design that uh, I totally fell in love with, and ended up playing everything they touched after that. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it, Shining Force is definitely the better known, and obviously it was the series that mm-hmm. took off for them. Um, although there was a sequel to Shining in the Darkness on the on the Saturn. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just it was just one of those games I picked it up on a whim, uh, and I couldn't put it down until I finished it. I remember it like one of those great old rpgs where you sit and you map everything out on graph paper and you know you know where you just know where every little nook and cranny is of the level this is awesome do you think it was the character design that kind of drew you in in over other dungeon crawlers that you you couldn't get into i think so yeah um i think the carrot like because and it definitely wasn't the 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 game cover because it was terrible but (laughs) But seeing it, seeing it in magazines, especially like you would go, there was one scene in particular in that game, which is in the, the pub, which you, oh, is that, where most of the story takes yeah. part. And uh, you just see the character design in there. And it's all this, it's got this weird sort of this climax setup where, you know, there's a lot of humans, but there's a lot of like anthropomorphic animals as well. Mm-hmm. And they're all sort of mingling and, and uh, it's just really cool. And it also had some of the greatest sound design ever. Uh, if you remember playing it, the pub music would get fainter and louder depending on if you were facing the pub or not when you were in the town square that's really you, good yeah so the first time you go in it's awesome because you hear it in the distance and then you yeah. turn and it's like yeah. as you're getting closer it's getting louder and louder and louder and then you go in and it's full volume that's really cool it's very cool for the time I oh, so I, d- disappointing everybody I have nothing to say about Shining in the Darkness so. <laughs> yeah or that does is, he because <laughs> he was chastened after Rick no that I, that, is, <laughs> that is not a genre of game that I am particularly drawn to at all as regular listeners of this show will know so I, I have nothing <laughs> to add about dungeon crawlers I can mm-hmm. picture you just nodding 
That's sagely. <laughs> Stroking his chin. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, in which case, we are now back to Joe. <sighs> well, shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like... I don't... I feel like a dick if I pick it. But I also feel like, as Austin was saying earlier, I feel like I need to be true to myself. Not to be true to yourself. All right, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to, for a chorus of swear words. Uh, Contra Hardcore. That's fine. <laughs> it's on my list. It's on my list. It's on my list. But it's, I, yeah, it's, I'll, I'll let you have it, is what I'm saying. Uh, it's okay. So I did pick Gunstar Heroes first for the reasons that I stated earlier, which is that while there is a Contra game for the Genesis, I feel like uh, like Gunstar Heroes is a better full realization of that. But I also feel like Contra Hardcore is probably my second or third favorite game in the Contra series after NES Contra and probably about neck and neck with Contra 3. Um, wow. it, it loses a little bit of points because it's hard as fuck. And I know yeah. pe- people say that about Contra and Contra 3 and Super C, but like, no, like Contra Hardcore, the US release especially, and since we're not including imports in this draft, I am forcibly talking about the US release is hard as fuck. Like, I've never gotten the good ending in this game, and I still love the shit out of it, but I've never gotten the best ending because this game is fucking A-hard. And there's no extra life code like there is in, you know, practically every other game in the Contra series, at least not in the US release. In the Japanese release, they gave you a life bar because they recognized how hard this fucking game was, but, but no quarter given in the US release at all. So... But what I love about it is, one, it's fucking gorgeous, as we were saying earlier. Um, again, like, bucking the, the common wisdom on the, the Genesis. Uh, this game is is really good looking. It does have a dirtier, sort of muted look to it than, yeah. say, uh, Contra 3. But it still looks really good. It has four playable characters who each have an arsenal of four completely unique weapons. So most Contra games have, like, six you know, different power-up weapons. This game, between all of the characters, has a total of 16 different weapons. Um, and they all make you feel super awesome. Like, I usually pick Sheena, because she's got the, the spread laser that, like, home. it's like a spread and a laser, and it homes. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's a spread homing laser. Right. right. Um, yeah. which I use, which I go in for, but all of the characters, one of the characters is a wolf man with like a Gatling gun for an arm and yep. sunglasses. <laughs> this is 100% true. So like, how can you say no to that? And you know, I, it's just, it's, it's got a ton of bosses. It's, I believe this was the last game that a lot of the people who eventually would go on to form treasure worked on before they left Konami. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it totally shows. Um, yeah, a lot of the boss design, especially, you can you can really see what they were working on before. Big Gunstar. segmented arms. Yeah. And, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a super <laughs> weird hidden ending where if, if at stage three, when you go down the ramp, if you climb up the wall, you fight this weird like giant headed Richter Belmont looking dude. What? Oh man! And I did not know. You this. didn't know that? Okay. Me no. either. <laughs> right. So at the if, if in the middle of stage three, like you come to this door, and it's like if you go through the door, it's like there's a big boss fight. But if you climb the wall, you'll go up, and there's this weird dude with a top hat who's like, "Do you want to fight in the fighting arena for some money?" And if you say <laughs> if you say yes, you fight three consecutive boss battles. The first of which is this bizarre like Richter Belmont with a giant head who instead of throwing a cross-shaped boomerang, throws a fish at you that comes back, and it plays like a remix of Vampire Killer while you're doing it. Man, then, like, And then you great. fight these two other weird bosses, and if you if you beat that little mini boss rush, it, the game ends, and you get you get swept away to an alien planet where you take out like a female... Like, Joe's making all this up. Is, yeah. um, look it up, it not even kidding. <laughs> not even kidding. You get swept away to an alien planet where, like, this female ape becomes your, like, ape queen of this weird, like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, not this making totally this This is totally the thing that some kid on the, on the playground would tell you. Right. And it was like, 
oh no, you gotta you gotta do X, Y, and Z, and you gotta put this thirty times, and then oh no, you did it wrong. That's why you didn't see it. No, you gotta. The timing is really <laughs> tight. Yeah. And again, he's doing all of this while being a wolf man with sunglasses and a cap. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> which is which is arguably the best part. Um, the 1990s, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the 90s. And so there's that, and then there's there's like six total endings, I think, including one where you like, similar to the original Streets of Rage, where you like betray your cause and become the bad guy, um, or like in league with the bad guy. And I will say that just this whole thing. Uh, my last thought is that <laughs> is that hardcore uprising was the biggest disappointment of this generation, of the last generation for me personally. There's not really much to be said to that. Yeah. <laughs> no. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with except, you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mike, again, our Cana- our regular Canadian, um, he really liked that game for some reason. It's hmm. a little broken. <sighs> some All people right, don't Ray. Peace, you know? All right. I'm going to turn this into a Konami cast. <laughs> Who's <laughs> figured it out that yet? That's not necessarily a problem. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, Rocket Knight Adventures. Great choice. Ah, that yeah. is really a great choice. Yep, yep, yep. Great platformer. Um, of course, it's the one with the possum. You play Sparkster, and you know he has like this uh, rocket pack. He's a rocket knight, of course, and so you can power up this rocket pack and just shoot across the screen almost as much as you want. And then you know you can also hang from branches and other branch-like things <laughs> in the levels uh, <laughs> on his tail and stuff. So and besides that like it is just a fun game because of that because he's also just like an expressive character i mean yes this was one of the early rung sort of animal mascot games of the time but uh this is one of the better ones because like (laughs) it is silly at first because like oh we got a hedgehog then we got this and i got a possum and the blah blah blah. um this is much better this is much better than awesome possum yeah (laughs) (laughs) he kicked off the fucking possum game that's a low bar. <laughs> right. Anyway, yeah. Saying, in the realm of video game possums of the 16 bit era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, it, and Anyway, it really holds up. Uh, of course, because I think also because it's a Konami game, the music is really great. And uh, the difficulty does ramp up. Like, I was surprised when I was like first playing it as a kid. I was like, God, this got really hard all of a sudden. I can't get through this, this fire level or whatever fire it was. Fire level, yes. Yeah. yeah. Like that's yeah, and that's where you start hitting the wall, and it's like, God, okay, fine, I'll just concentrate a bit more, I guess. <laughs> Eventually, you do it. So yeah, and it just has like, it's not quite as like gritty as Contra, but it does have sort of like this earthy look to it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's just because you know it's kind of like a medieval setting, um, but it's not quite like super happy, sugary cartoon land, mm-hmm. even though Sparkster, you know, kind of looks like that. Like the world is somewhat more realistic in that in that sense, yeah. and uh, yeah, that just right, like uh, there's war happening, there's orphans. That's there's, right, right. You know, it's like it's got this uh, weird yeah. steampunk vibe going on. Yeah, now, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, That's it's, really what it, I meant to say. Yeah, it doesn't really fit it at first, but it's like oh, it's kind of cool. All those pigs are driving this like steampunk mecha, and yes. Well, yeah. and it was a time when when as a kid you know or as a player of that game i couldn't say oh this is steampunk and so right. it's that much more interesting and inventive and and you know unique uh in terms of like what what the context was for a game like that you know, medieval stuff but also there's a jetpack that's cool okay right you know <laughs> yeah yeah for sure uh, i guess one of my other biggest disappointments of the last generation was the, the rocket knight i'd yeah. forgotten about that cheese konami has really <laughs> lost it haven't they that's you start to start to wonder. Contra yeah. Four was good. I like Contra <laughs> Four. Yeah, yeah, but that was way forward, right? Is that who made that? That was way forward. Yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah, they really. Yeah. I don't. I mean, <laughs> well, that Castlevania, that weird multiplayer 2D Castlevania thing they did, Castlevania <laughs> HD. I like that. That, that was, was fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. But that's that goes into the whole, you know, doing stuff with your bros is fun no matter what. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but playing yeah. playing four player two D Castlevania is is just 
Yeah. Yeah. That does sound pretty awesome. Yeah. And the dual sequel, Sparkster, is on different platforms, pretty good too. Yeah, that's that's I I was gonna mention that, but I got in trouble for mentioning Shadowrun before. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he's bitter or anything. No. I didn't, uh, no, I, mm-hmm. it, Total it, count on bitter Shadowrun mentions too. <laughs> right. It's it, it is really interesting that they did release a game called Sparkster for both the Super Nintendo and the Genesis, and they are not at all mm-hmm. the same game. If someone did a video series about that, they could probably do a pretty fascinating episode about those games at some point down the line. Yeah. Or at least they think it's fascinating. Uh, oh, 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 see, see. oh! Hot's fired! Et tu, Brute! <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Well, no, because you haven't done it yet. This might be. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that's that's, that's what you meant. That's what meant. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. What I, mean. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, Austin. Uh, Shadow Run. Of okay. course it is. Uh, and then it comes out of nowhere Wait, after... Wait, did Joe already pick that? Wait, wasn't he? No, I didn't. I he... picked Flashback before. No, no, I and... said, did Joe already pick it? Cause no. <laughs> no. So he, he keeps saying to... Shadowrun, he keeps so I just... He's saying it. I which, almost... in retrospect, it might... Yeah, maybe it's a cunning strategy to get me to waste a pick on Shadowrun. No, I'm not... <laughs> no it's not. It's a... Shadowrun is fucking amazing, but you should it's talk about why amazing. you think it's fucking amazing. It's, uh, you know, so... I gave myself... I'm not going to say what I'm going to say there. Uh, Shadowrun is is an amazing RPG, um, action RPG that was not like anything else at, at the time that open I played. World ga- proto open, open world, world game. Pro- proto open world game. Lots of little kind of like uh, open world sectors that you could go to that each had buildings that you could go into. Open world not only in terms of the area you explore, but also uh, it, it had a lot of random events that would happen through kind of um, a choose your own adventure style text windows that would pop up. You know, you like see a vampire. So Shadowrun is a cyberpunk magical universe, which, you know, some people could take or leave that mashup. But uh, let me tell you, eight till 13 year old or 15, 29 year old Austin, let's say, <laughs> really into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and so you'd have like a random event would pop up and it'd be like oh there's a vampire who's harassing someone like you chase them away and they corner you in an alley and then you have a little fight and that was really cool but there's also like uh, uh, you could go on these runs which were kind of randomly generated okay well now you're gonna go infiltrate this building and it's gonna have this layout and you're gonna have to you know you know steal this uh, executive and and kidnap him and bring him out and you like either can sneak in or break your way in and really good character development uh, mechanically really cool NPCs throughout that game and again just an amazing soundtrack and overall aesthetic yeah it's I could it, go on and on I, I, it's tough not to you know my list of disappointments from the last generation is actually stacking up. <laughs> The more we yeah. talk about this, um, but yeah, and again, also a game where there was a Super Nintendo version and a Genesis version, Com- and they are totally, game. completely different. Completely different. Yeah, and I would say that the for me, the Genesis version is way better to me. I mean, I, the Super Nintendo version is okay. Yeah, but the a, I have, yeah, a friend like that, he he swears by the Genesis version. You, <laughs> you disagree? I take it. I like the way he said it, as if you'd taken a blow to the head. <laughs> no, me, no, no, I. Um, I don't really. <laughs> What's well, a different a thing, right? Like the the SNES version is a a really you know tightly written campaign adventure. It's so super if you're linear. Looking, it's super linear. It's an adventure game in a lot of in a lot of respects. A lot of like I need this item to then progress past this. Whereas the Genesis game feels like it's a, a sandbox and a playground that you can that you can mess around in, and there are certain kind of requirements and gates that you have to pass through before you get to the next story bit. Mm-hmm. Um, in that way, it, it reminds me a lot of. I keep talking about like, oh, I was primed for this experience because of this early Genesis game. But when I finally got around to playing something like Morrowind, even though I'd mostly played JRPGs in between Shadowrun and and playing Morrowind, um, it was that sort of open world, but with with kind of like, oh, there's still a main quest that I can focus on what I want to, and then I can go off and go do these other things um, that weren't just regular side quests, but were like, in the world, stuff just happens. Games like Shadowrun really prep me for that. The combat's not great. Uh, it's a little obtu- a little obtuse, but I absolutely adore it. I think that's me on, on Shadowrun. There you go. And your next pick. Oh, right. Oh, no. 
Ranger X. Ranger X. Oh, wow. That's um, a good wow. pick. Aha. That was not uh, on my list, but I totally respect that pick for sure. It's yeah, um I recently replayed it and actually beat it for the first time. You know, when I was a kid, I think I got to level three or four over and over and over again. And I think there's lots wrong with Ranger X. I think the controls are a little too floaty. Um I think it's again a little obtuse and like there's a lot of strange mechanics um, in terms of like how you use the vehicles you have but aesthetically it's one of the most um, just like visually and sonically impressive things that I played as a kid Um, it conveys a lot of tone not only with the music but also with the designs of the characters and the machines there's like the moment in the second stage or might be like one two or something where you walk on screen and the city is on fire and there are little people who run past your legs and you realize oh i'm a big robot man like i'm not just a dude in a suit like i'm a i'm in a mech and it sells that like mecha that like 90s mecha aesthetic late like 80s early 90s really well uh, on the genesis and again the music is just outstanding and i i wish there had been something else that hit that tone and that visual style uh, in the last generation or two, you know, and they, all of my favorite mech games are cool, but none of them have that, like, that energy that, again, that early 90s energy that Ranger X did. Yeah, I'll agree mm-hmm. with that. I, I think that, uh, I mean, m- m- any mech games that I can think of that come out now are either Armored Core yeah. or like, they're, but... yeah, or, or they're um, strategy games. They're Super Robot right. Tyson. Right, right. Yeah. So. And those are cool, but like, there's nothing where I'm like in this. It, the things that come to mind are actually things from um, that felt similar to this, or things from the Xbox era, and not all mech games, but like, so Metal Wolf Chaos felt like that a little bit for me. <laughs> but strangely, like uh-huh. the, At- the Atogi games feel like that for me. Um, maybe it's mm-hmm. the floatiness uh, and and the kind of unified aesthetic, but like, just that. I want more games like that that are that are. Uh, a little, a little aggressive, um, a little off center. That shouldn't probably be on this list, but you know, some weirdo like me would would find it. And love it. <laughs> also, just cool wireframe stuff in the like the loading areas, not loading areas, but the, the kind of interstitials between each stage, where it just set up stuff really well. And and another like just, it's a it's a Sega Genesis ass Sega Genesis game, you know? Yeah, yeah, it is Sega Genesis as <laughs> well. That's for sure. A giant robot who rides around on a giant robot motorcycle. You it's know? like a robot. Yeah. It's like a giant robot unicycle. <laughs> it is. A, it is. <laughs> and it's like mm-hmm. so. I think, but we talked about this a lot during the Super Nintendo uh, draft, and it hasn't really come up here. But like the 16-bit era was the time when like like 2D gaming had sort of reached its like as far as the way things looked, they seemed like they pretty well figured it out. So it was mm-hmm. just like doing weird gameplay things that right. really like. And and then as our friend Alex put it, the 32-bit era was spent figuring out how triangles work. So right. it like. There was no, a lot of that like sort of ended there. And like now I think with modern indie games, we're seeing like experimentation in the 2D space sure. again for the first time in a really long time. But the 16-bit era is just like, for 2D games, it's this really amazing, uh, like fertile ground for weird, awesome, unripped off, like unfollowed up on like games. Mm-hmm. And, and Yeah, the fun is back. <laughs> mm-hmm. so all right yeah that's that's okay. me on range x for sure all right ray all righty um <clears throat> uh let's do some steampunk stuff again uh steel empire Huh. Hmm. Uh, I, got, I feel you. I feel you. Yep. That's one of my favorite shoot 'em ups, actually. And uh, it just uh, it has a great style to it. Like I said, <laughs> pretty much one of the steampunkier Genesis games that we've talked about so far. Um, you can play as either a plane or a blimp. <laughs> Wh- which do you play as? <laughs> I feel like a blimp plane. wouldn't be as safe. 
No. Yeah, I should have said Zeppelin, actually. Uh, I usually go for the plane. Uh, just because. I like, uh, <laughs> like, uh... I like light things that move it speedy. I can mm-hmm. you know, move around like that. Uh, it's actually comparable to an arcade game called uh, Jesus. What the hell is it called? Uh, the Great Ragtime Show. Mm. That game is way wackier, but this one is a little bit more serious. But it's still like visually similar, and you do some 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 similar things as well. But anyway, Steel Empire is really great. Uh, just. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 made by a company who you would never really think would be making shooters. That that, that is Hot B, and uh, you know they weren't really known for shooters or anything. <laughs> the Black Bass didn't although, make you think they'd make a kick-ass shooter <laughs> or what? But although their yeah. first remember their first game on the Mega Drive was actually in Sector X. Yeah, right. So I mean, but yeah, after that they didn't really do much. But no, it was uh, fishing all the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a solid game though. Where the money is. I'm surprised this is the first shoot 'em up that we've we've seen on the list. I was just yeah. thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thank you, Rhett. Um, it, yeah. So I heard there's like a ridiculously expensive like remake or whatever on. Uh huh. It just 3DS. came out on 3DS. It's and a it's, good remake. It is good, but it's thirty goddamn dollars, dude, and I don't know why they. Who is paying? Doing that. Yeah. Who is paying thirty dollars for a remake of an obscure shooter? <laughs> From Hot something, bit era. something went really wrong, I think, maybe in the license agreement or something. Right, <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> sure. You can't have this unless you charge $30. Okay. Now we're bankrupt. Yeah, like, <laughs> I just, I want to know who's, who, who is, who is shelling out 30 bucks for... And that's a remake, right? We're not talking about a virtual console. No, it's a, it's a, it's a remake. Okay. But it's a, it's an e-store remake. There's no cartridge version, right? Okay. It's, yeah, it's all, uh, only on the eShop, um, and it's not like a full 3D thing. I mean, it is still mostly 2D. It's just, you know, improved a bit. And it is good. It's still good, mechanically good. But, yeah, I wish right. I could tell you guys to run out and get it. But I. <laughs> so How's the sound? Like, yeah. How's the sound in the remake? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all new. Not all new music. I mean, new renditions of the music and sure. stuff. So it's not the same kind of synth in it. Yeah, yeah. Just too bad. Yeah, they also like they also ported it to GBA years ago. I hadn't actually played that version too much, but you know, passable, I guess. 3DS version is a bit better because there's not that you know washed out color scheme that they have to <laughs> compensate for. I, I was actually <laughs> gonna say that I assume that the 3DS version doesn't like squash the. That's the problem with remakes of 16-bit shooters on the GBA is like you lose. You either like get squashy and it looks weird, or you lose like real estate at the top and bottom which makes dodging all of a sudden really fucking hard yeah i mean and this is a horizontal shooter i should say so it's yes you know, yes pretty much easy it. to deal with that so. Mm-hmm. so all right awesome okay. uh all right, back to joe okay <laughs> <sighs> let's see take that off the list uh let's see here Man, I still have a lot of stuff. There's a lot of great Genesis games. Yeah, it turns <laughs> out. <laughs> yes. Funny. Despite despite so many people saying that it just had like Madden, which is no longer relevant, it uh, it that's not true. Um, <laughs> shit, man, Madden this is Sonic. this is hard. I'm almost adopting Ray's like no arcade ports rule just to save myself some heartache. Um, <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Let's go. I, you know what? Again, this is coming back to that whole going with your heart thing, and uh, I'm I'm gonna go with Splatterhouse Two. Huh? Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> I, 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 Kurt, I like your reaction. <laughs> I would like to know the reasoning behind your disapproving. Well, that is not a disapproving sound. It was more of a, I like Splatterhouse, because um, I had a Turbo Graphics, um, <laughs> but I've never played Splatterhouse too. It was sort of a, huh? Hmm, so there are a lot. There are a lot of people who would say that Splatterhouse Three is the best in the series, and I disagree with that. I think Splatterhouse Two is because Splatterhouse Two. Like Splatterhouse Three, the problem is that it it the only way to be effective is to be super cheap and just like spam the spin kick, which stops being fun 
like very very quickly the, the second sure. time you push it <laughs> right yeah right <laughs> Um, but Splatterhouse 2 is just a bigger, better, more awesome version of Splatterhouse 1. And I will just, I will cop to the fact that I understand people who say that these games are overrated and aren't that good. I get why people say that, but I don't agree with them because, one, the, the design, like, aesthetic design of Splatterhouse series is really great. And if you're a horror junkie like I am, then it's, like, extra yeah. great. Right, like, yeah. Like, there's so many unique monsters and sprites in these games. The The atmosphere is, like, so great and spot on. And the music, which is part of that, is is really fantastic. And just the whole the whole thing. Like, I also even like the, the most recent... This was not a disappointment of the last generation for me. I actually really liked the new Splatterhouse game. Um, and I was really sad that it sold, like, total shit. Um... <laughs> because that means there will never ever be another Splatterhouse game, which makes me sad. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm a Splatterhouse fanatic, and I, I have all of the games uh, in the series, and including the the weird Famicom one, which I love a lot. Um, <laughs> but Splatterhouse Two for me is 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 the peak of the whole thing. It's it's really gory. It's really great. There's tons of of, of uh, references to horror movies of the 80s and early 90s, I guess, but like 70s and 80s, especially. Sure. Tons of references. Uh, it's, it's, it was, it, when I was the eight, whatever age I was when it came out, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old, and I rented this game, and like when, when like the weird, freaky, like zombie babies come out of the ceiling of the woodshed and you chainsaw them, <laughs> like that was to me. A, a serious revelation. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that says the, about the, me as a revelation person. revelation is, man, that is fucked up. <laughs> but also fucking awesome. But cool. I hope yeah. mom doesn't come in here. Yeah. And, and so, you know. So wrong. It, it just, I, I just, I love it. I love Splatterhouse 2. Um, and what's weird is the last few games that we've talked about actually... Uh, Steel Empire, not as much, but a lot of these games have suddenly, like, the 16-bit era games are seeing a big spike in price. And so, like, a lot of these games I got for not very expensive, and now when I look at how much they are, I'm like, why is that so expensive? Like, right. yeah. but, like I had a, my copy of Splatterhouse 2 is, it has the box and the manual and everything, and I think I paid, like, five or six dollars for it. And now when I look, like, people are paying, like, fifty, sixty, seventy dollars for yeah, it. Yeah, like, the collectors have got all the prices really high on cartridges now. Yeah, and it's just that's weird to me, and it's it's sad to me. Although I will say to anybody listening to this, if you if, if people like Splatterhouse or are interested in Splatterhouse, all three of the original games are on the disc with the most recent version, which now you can get like dirt fucking cheap. Because again, it sold like total <laughs> shit. Right. So you can get it for PS3 or Xbox 360 for like I don't know ten dollars if that, and it it includes Splatterhouse, Splatterhouse Two, and Splatterhouse Three. So I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right, Greg. Um, be I'm gonna have two. Yeah, the last two, right? For me, it yeah. will be your last two. Yeah, these are important. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with uh, Alicia Dragoon. Nice. Oh, cool, man. Nice. Is, yeah. yeah. Lesser known. Game. Yeah, there you go. It's lesser known. So little known that it's been <laughs> forgotten. Um, yeah. So this is <laughs> this is the first game uh, for the Genesis by Game Arts, which is uh, you know if you're into the Sega CD or anything, you'd know them better for Lunar. Um, yeah, it's just a side-scrolling action game, uh, but it's, it's really not cool. Just a side scroll. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say it's got some. <laughs> it's got a cool hook because. A, you play as a female character, which wasn't super common uh, back then. Although, uh, you know, there were female characters in beat 'em ups and stuff like that usually, but but not as the main character, the single main character. Um, and rather than shoot projectiles, uh, she actually fires um, basically thunder from her hands. And so uh, the whole game is all about managing your um, your power meter, as far as because if you can fill the power meter up, she actually does like a screen clearing attack before she continues on with her regular uh, homing thunder attack. 
Um, and it's got sort of a fantasy medieval setting. But the other, it's also got it's also got uh, some RPG elements because you can actually level up uh, during the game as well. And that's just the main character. She's also got four animal-based familiars that follow her around. And you have to manage their life bars and their attacks and also level them up. And uh, if you play smart and you find all the hidden areas, by the end of the game, your companions are total badasses. They can pretty much take out anything on the screen. It's just um, like Pokemon. Just like Pokemon. <laughs> Not at all. But uh. <clears throat> And it's got like this whole... I think one of the other things that I really like about it, it was done in relation with uh, Gainax. Gainax, I think they're what? A manga or anime studio. Anyway, they're pretty, pretty famous. Evangelion. Yeah, Yeah. there you go. Evangelion. Um, I can't believe I didn't know that. That's so pathetic. It is It is <laughs> 1 o'clock here. 1 a.m. here. Um, what kind of nerd are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Congratulations. But, um, but the the thing is, is that it really shows because you can tell they built this whole universe for this character that really, like, 90% of it you'll never even learn uh, playing the game. But you can sort of feel the weight of it there. Uh, the whole thing is, and the whole thing plays out kind of like you are familiar with that universe. And it's just a really, really cool, really different kind of game, especially that it even came here. Like, I was shocked when it came here because it just doesn't seem like it would fit the American market, or what, what you would think an executive somewhere would think would fit the American market. I think that's what's um, so great about the 16-bit era, though. Like, the executives sure. were getting their hands too deep into what they thought would do. Like, they were like, it's a game? Put it on the shelf. We need more games. <laughs> Although, yeah, and it's, it's funny because, like, when you look at the American box art, um, she's been dressed up basically as Tiris, <clears throat> Tiris Flair from Golden Axe. Like, <laughs> right. Suddenly she's a barbarian <laughs> woman. But she doesn't look like that at all in the game. But, uh, yeah, I love that game. I can pick it up and play it for, like any time and I'll just play right through it I, I, I really had a great time with that game back in the day and I still really enjoy it today yeah. somebody else talk so I have time to make another pick before my one minute timer starts <laughs> up uh, well I, I would agree I, I also have a copy of Alicia Dragoon and I yeah it's it's a totally fantastic like abnormal side scrolling uh, shooter because it makes you more powerful than I think most of those type of side scrolling sort of platforming shooters do like her, her attacks homes in on pretty much everything like you don't really you don't have to aim it really um you know it, it kind of it does a lot of the work for you and like you said if you have it all the way charged up it just like does like a, a second hand sweep around the screen and knocks out everything <laughs> but that that frees it up for more interesting platforming and and sort of searching the levels and, and stuff like that and i think that's all yeah really really awesome it's balanced really well too, because even though the the, the weapon sounds really powerful, um, you don't you can't fire it uh, constantly for very long. Right, and you, and you turn. can't walk while you fire it either, if I'm not mistaken. Right. I think you're right. You, yeah. No, I think you're right. You uh, can jump, but you can't walk. Yep. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, Timer starting. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, this, uh, this is tough. I'm trying to decide if I need to go with like a. A classic that I have up at the top of my list, or something different. Um, Make it count. This is it. I know. I don't want this to land with a thud. I'm gonna have to do it. Um, Castle of Illusion. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mickey Mouse. Yeah. I was waiting for a Disney game to show up. No. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of them. Took long yeah. enough. This is the one, I mm. think. Personally. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I like Quackshot a lot, but it does, has not held up as well as Castle of Illusion, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's funny because it's the first one. I, I enjoy World of Illusion as well, but I honestly, I can't tell you much about that game. Uh, Fantasia's garbage. Oh, oh, God, it's so terrible. <laughs> Fantasia sucks. <laughs> Yeah, but talk about but why no, Castle of Illusion is so awesome. Castle of Illusion, it's it's so weird to get excited about it, especially like if you're back the age I was when the game came out, where I was like 14. So it wasn't a game a 14 year old boy would probably be all that crazy about because Disney had not begun their renaissance yet, um, and it's very classic Mickey, Mickey Mouse, and uh, it's just a great, great Japanese style platformer. Yeah. Uh, you just run through these gorgeous worlds. Um, you know, it was early, early days of the Genesis. So it was, it wasn't like something you'd seen a lot of so far. Um, 
facing off against like all these interesting creatures and each world was was radically different from the last uh, like you start out in a forest where everything is just absolutely huge and there's this great scene where you're riding dewy leaves I, I feel ridiculous even saying this you're riding like, <laughs> dewy leaves through spider webs and stuff like that and you're fighting like a tree at the end and then you move into like a toy land where the whole idea is that yeah. you can flip gravity around and you're fighting tin soldiers and and that sort of thing and and eventually you end up doing the classic like um i forget which 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 it is at the end of the game to go save Minnie Mouse, but uh, there's w- one of the classic Disney uh, villains who's actually um, it's, who's Ma- actually Ma- it's Maleficent, isn't it's it? Maleficent. It's Maleficent. That's it. I want to say Cruella, but different. it's not right. I feel like they call her something different. But yeah, it's totally Maleficent. It's Maleficent. That's right. And so the whole idea is you just move through this gigantic castle where every time Mickey enters a new door, it's a completely different world. Uh, there's like a clockwork world and stuff like that, and it's it's got great animation, beautiful graphics, great music, very hummable tunes um and it just it totally back then it totally grabbed you and, and sort of caught you out of left field because we kind of capcom had been doing good disney games on the nes but you know they were still sort of a rarity a good disney game was kind of a rarity and uh then this came out and i was like wow this is awesome it's really great and the remake was great too recently i don't know if you guys played that or not I, I didn't get around to I it heard, now. Yeah, I heard it was good, though. Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah. That's it. That's my five. That's his five. It's a good Joe. five. That is a good five. Thanks. We'll, we'll recap. Joe? Whew. Let's... Uh, man, talk about making a count. <laughs> uh, shit. So it's like, do I go with the more obscure sort of like thing that I feel like if I, if I don't mention it, it won't get its proper due or do I go with like the classic that I'm surprised nobody has picked yet. Right. Or, uh, do I just go altered beast? You, you no. want altered beast, right? <laughs> if, if somebody picks altered beast, I might call him all again. This whole fucking draft. <laughs> altered beast. Sucks. I am now moving on to my second big panel. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I. What's on my list so far? Is it all side scrolling, <laughs> side scrolling action platformers? I think it is. <laughs> it is. I. It kind of is, yeah. Yeah, no, it totally is. So the question is, like, do I just round that out and say, let's let's well, have the last of, one nutshell, so. be that, or do I, I? There's a shooter that's really good that I that's still out there, and there's Listen several. To your heart, Joe. That's, that's the rule. Stop picking. <sighs> Start picking. That's what Genesis. Oh, is. Genesis, I, what your heart. I says. hate. I hate to leave some of this stuff on the table, but I, if I'm going with my heart and the fact that I haven't picked a shooter yet, and that there's only one shooter that's been picked, I have to go with Musha. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. A.K.A. Musha Alest, uh, as it was known. Actually, technically, the U.S. name is M-U-S-H-A. <laughs> the right. American name. Um, it is a, an entry in the Alest series. It is one of the best entries in the Alest series. I would say it, it and its sequel are my two favorite Alest games. The sequel being Robo Alest for uh, the Sega CD. Love that game. I love the shit out of that game. That is another game that I bought a copy of at random for only a few bucks and now, like, it has gone through the fucking roof. Um, and Ro- and Musha Alest, I actually don't own a physical card of that. I just have a virtual console version because that game is one of the most expensive Genesis cards. It got a pretty limited release uh, in the U.S. But uh, So, essentially, it's a, it's a vertically scrolling shooter um, with a sort of sort of steampunk theme, but it's not your normal steampunk. It's you are playing a giant flying fighting robot in feudal Japan during like the Edo period. Makes sort of sense. like you do. Yeah, you know, like as you do. Um, <laughs> I think many prominent archaeologists would tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's, how Nobunaga, <laughs> that's how Nobunaga won in the Warring States period, yes. right? That's... Giant samurai robots were a thing. Um, and it, it, it it's, uh, it's really good. It's really fast-paced. The, the 
the power-ups are ridiculous. And it's just, the soundtrack is fantastic, and it's, just, it's, it, oh man, 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 it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. And like, you know, the Super Nintendo draft kind of came and went without a lot of shooters getting picked, because uh, as we sort of touched on early in this draft, in, in some ways the Genesis was more powerful, in that I believe it supported an additional layer of parallax to mm -hmm. the Super Nintendo, and it could have supported many more objects on, like, many more sprites on screen at, at a time. It was a higher clock speed, too, didn't it? Yes, I, yeah, I believe so. Back when so, that was a thing. Right, <laughs> right. So, um, weirdly, like, you know, like, there are, I mean, there, like, UN Squadron is good, and Space Megaforce, which is also technically an Aleste game, um, is good and stuff like that, but, like, the Genesis just really kicked the ass of the Super Nintendo when it came yeah. to, to shooters. And uh, this is this is probably my favorite Genesis shooter. Um, it's just it's so good. Compile were like fucking magicians mm. uh, when it came to shooters, especially. But really, every like they also did the Ghostbusters game for Genesis, which is totally yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's a good game. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, M Musha is is the jam. It's just like it's totally the premise again is completely insane. The power-up system is totally awesome. Aesthetically, it's fantastic. There's so much going on. It's it's really hard, but really fun. And and yeah, yeah. Musha is is the jam. I think I made the the correct choice. I'm really glad these have been the shooters that have shown up on this list. Is what I'll say. <laughs> is this Steel Steel Empire and Musha? Yeah. I you know what? I toyed with Thunder Force three. Yep. But yep. that's um, on my list at near closer to the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah, but I ultimately I think Thunder Force Three just isn't. I, and Thunder Force Four was on my list until I replayed it last night for a little while, and then yeah. I was like, man, Thunder Force Four, not actually, or, or Lightning Force as it is known in the U.S., right. um, not actually that great of a game, all things considered. Like, the, there's very few power ups, and it, there's yeah. Anyways, Musha, it's great. Check it out. It's a. It was on Virtual Console for a long time. I know things are getting like slowly but surely delisted. I don't know if it has been or not, but if it hasn't been and you have a Wii, a regular Wii, not a Wii U, because why would you make it available on, on uh, <laughs> the, the current system? Uh, download Musha. It's 8 bucks or whatever, and it's totally great. Ray? Alright. Well, you know, I've been pick. naming a lot of games that... Uh, were you know slightly obscure, and I think they're things that uh, I would like you to play. I think this one is uh, something that everybody really should play because it is one of the greatest Genesis games, and that is uh, Beyond Oasis. And like Crusader Senti, it's an action RPG, but not quite as much like Zelda. Um, but it is, for one thing, just one of the most utterly gorgeous Genesis games oh, yeah. made because they just nailed everything about the color scheme and just the yeah. art style and everything. Just sort of like this anime-esque uh, flat-shaded stuff a lot of the times and just it's just really great color palette usage. Uh, made by Ancient, uh, you know, the, the people... A lot of people responsible for uh, things like uh, Streets of Rage 2, especially the music, like Yuzo Koshiro. Mm -hmm. um, and so these are people who really just knew their way around the Genesis architecture, I think, and just knew what sort of things went into a quote-unquote Sega game. And uh, they, they, they really nailed it. And it is... Uh, let's see. I think, you know, it, while Senti is similar to Link to the Past, this is also just feels a bit more like a Zelda game and I don't know how else to articulate that properly <laughs> but it just does have this uh, a better sense of like a linear adventure in such a way that Zelda really pulled it itself off so well um, and yeah <laughs> I don't know what else to say really uh, but it is fantastic and uh it also got a sequel on Saturn, uh, maybe not as good, but this one is just really, just like, really stands out to me. And I think uh, it's really one of the uh, top tier ones. Main character had really good pants. Yeah, true. <laughs> yes. he had hammer pants, right? Yeah, he had hammer pants. Great yeah. hammer pants. Yeah. 
Uh, I, well, so if, if, if you don't have anything more to say, Ray, I would just like to sort of hijack the conversation to say... Please, that, Joe! <laughs> that, uh... <laughs> I want to use all your time so that uh, so that Austin has time to decide on his final thing. Yeah, this is tough. This is impossible. Um, in the realm of gorgeous games, which we've kind of touched on a lot, like, again, the common wisdom was the Super Nintendo was such more the graphical powerhouse, and I, I think we've kind of debunked that in, in large part. Um, Super Nintendo games are often more colorful, but this game is, is like, along with, I would say, Aladdin, which is interesting because they both involve people in hammer pants. Yep. Um, <laughs> like, among the uh, most gorgeous games of the 16-bit era, like, bar none. Like, this game is super colorful, and your main character has a million frames of animation. Like, he is so right. well animated. Uh, much like Aladdin in the Genesis version of Aladdin, mm-hmm. which is well, utterly gorgeous. It was, uh, kind of the, it was kind of the thing, like back in the day it's like if you stop trying to make ports across both consoles start trying to make your genesis games look like super nintendo games and you actually played to the system strengths you got stuff like beyond oasis and aladdin right i mean yeah where color i mean color was still a, an issue but it wasn't a big issue anymore yeah <laughs> yeah uh, it, and it, it's just you know, you don't you don't see people say talking about how much better Sega Master System games look than NES games. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's not an argument that people bring up, but for some reason, when it comes to the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, that's a thing that people will just constantly mention is that the Genesis the Super Nintendo version looks so much better. And I guess that's sort of relevant in cases like you know, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, where essentially the games are borderline identical, except you know, the Genesis version just isn't quite as pretty because it lacks some of the colors. Um, right. You know, but, but in it the has case, more soul. It, and it also has a map. It has a mini map that's like in the corner, which is nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Word up. Yeah. Also, we didn't mention this, but the Genesis output in a really bizarre resolution. <laughs> that. Yeah, was, a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. That was weird for like, uh, like when two games came out, you know, the same game came out for both systems. It was like everything had to be kind of redrawn, or it would look like weird and squashy on the Genesis because <laughs> like it output at a weird, uh, weird uh, re- resolution. Well, it's so. definitely more noticeable in an emulator. Than it yeah, would be yeah, on a regular TV. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I I also will say that I do really try to play uh, most of the games that I played for this draft, like in preparation, I did play on actual hardware. Uh, on an XI, in fact, uh, because that's how I roll. Uh, <laughs> Fancy. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm a sucker for, uh, much like Retronaut's own Jeremy Parrish, I'm a sucker for, like, when two consoles are mashed into one thing, or not, not even, but like a console and an add on. Like, I have a PC Engine Duo R and I have a Done. JVC XI. I'm a sucker for that. Rocking, just, the, rocking the CDX over here. Then, you know, there you go. Nice. Very nice. Definitely stalling. He was definitely stalling to try to give me more I time. Was, I was. I was. I appreciate it. This is impossible. Um, <laughs> because now I can't... There's stuff on my list that's on my list because it should be on the list that we've compiled. <laughs> don't, 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 yeah. Do not do not don't do that. So that's, don't. that's problem one. I, I'm not going to do that. It's hard not to do that. Uh, there's stuff that's on that's on my list that I can now like kind of safely say, eh, I hope we can push that away because there's something like it represented. Uh, House of Illusion definitely helps there because I was Aladdin was in the running and now I can say, okay, we have our Disney game, it's okay. <laughs> um, I can also pull off Shining the Shining Force games because we have Shining the Darkness. But now I'm left with a bunch of games I can't. How much time do I have left to make this choice? There's a big series that we haven't touched. There are some huge series that we haven't touched yet. There's, there's one in particular that I almost there's one in particular game from last time, and I just I don't think I, I I don't think I, I can. People are gonna be really mad at me for not picking. <laughs> is locked up. No. A fantasy star game. I'm gonna instead pick Shinobi Three: Return of the Ninja Master. Oh. Oh, that was the other series. Nice. That was the okay. series I was actually thinking okay. of, and I almost picked Revenge of Shinobi with my. Me too. That was Shadow really Dancer tough. was on my lips for my fifth pick too. Actually, okay. uh, I that's a fair choice. Any of these games are, are fair choices. Shinobi yeah. Three is the one that I spent yeah, the most yeah. time with. There's a there's a jet bike or a jet ski <laughs> rather. There's a horse. 
Um, there, there, is there are weird mutant monsters Jones. inside of weird <laughs> glass cylinders. There's a rocking soundtrack. Just, it's so good. Um, and, and really, at the end of the day, one of the things I liked the most was getting really good with the sword in that game. And that's very specific sword slash distance where you like did that little leap forward and attack. And, and I don't know, like pixel perfect level design. Just loved it. Um, I, I, had to, I had to include it. And great bosses. Great, ridiculous bosses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I revisited that and Revenge of Shinobi a little bit uh, over the weekend, and I will say that personally, I feel like Revenge of Shinobi is more of... It's just... I, I don't know. It's just better. Part of it might be the Yuzo Koshiro soundtrack. That's the, yeah, uh, I can... I can. See Part that. of it might be beating up Spider-Man. I don't like. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's or Godzilla. Or, or Batman. Godzilla or Batman. Or Rambo. The Incredible Hulk. Uh, the Terminator. <laughs> right, yeah. but how many jet skis with ninjas on them are there? That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's true. Um, and I gotta. So uh, all right. So I've kind of briefly extolled the virtues of that. And Austin, unless you want to continue to, no, to talk I, about I it, think I would. I would like Greg to say why he was thinking of Shadow Dancer. Me too. I've just always, I don't know, I've always had a special place in my heart for Shadow Dancer. I love Revenge of Shinobi. I love Shinobi 3, but Shadow Dancer is something about it. Maybe just because it's so different. Is it the dog? Else. Is it That's that you can stick a dog, dog on dudes? You can stick a dog, yeah. He's got his dog with him the whole time. And it's got, it doesn't have Yuzo Koshiro music. It, music isn't even as good as Shinobi 3, but it's got totally unique music within like this the Shinobi universe as well. And there's just something about that game. I don't know what it is. I, I've never finished it. But I've played like the first half of it a million times. I don't know why. Can mm-hmm. we get can we get weirdly granular about something? And I don't know if anybody knows the answer <laughs> to this question, but oh, I'm we going. We can. I, yeah, I'm going to pose a question that I hope some member of the panel has an answer to. Shinobi Shadow Dancer, mm-hmm. the Spirit of Shinobi, or whatever the subtitle is, was huh. included on the PS2 Sega Genesis collection with a bunch of random shit. And then when they brought out. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection for the PS3 and Xbox 360. It contained like way more games that weren't on that PS2 disc, but mm-hmm. it did not include Shadow Dancer. Does anybody know why Shadow Dancer was left I, off? I'll, I'll make a guess, an educated guess. Okay. Because Revenge of Shinobi wasn't on that first disc. Hmm. Was it really? It wasn't? No. Wow. Madness. And the reason I the reason I even bring that up is because a friend who works at Sega, I I approached him about it. Right? It's like what what why the hell is Revenge of Shinobi not on this disc? And it has everything to do with the fact that Yuzo Koshiro owns all the rights to his music. Oh, right. Hmm. If you go to that title screen on, oh, on yeah. Revenge of Shinobi, you'll sure. see a Yuzo yep. Koshiro copyright on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know why Shadow Dancer was left off, except I will say that they ended up fixing up the right situation with Koshiro for the subsequent release and Revenge of Shinobi was added back to the game. So I'm thinking Shadow Dancer just got cut. Hmm. Yeah. But I don't know that for sure. It's just a guess. What I love about the, this conversation is what we've revealed is we could have picked any of the Shinobi games. They would have all fit in for different reasons. Either use a Koshiro music, uh, Genesis games where you have a pet that helps out with you, or Ninja Jet Skis, which, you know, Ninja Jet Skis. Yeah. Ninja Jet Skis, like that's... <laughs> Absolutely. So at this point, um, I, I'm thinking, so what we have typically done in the past is we do a lightning round. If we do a lightning round, we would like to round it out to 25 games for the 25th anniversary. So a lightning round, we would just name the games and we wouldn't talk for four minutes. You would just say this is the game. But to round it out to 25, we would need to do one of two things. Either Kurt would need to pick a game uh, and get a token pick, which I don't know if he has a game that he could pick. Uh, or we would all need, all four of us would need to agree on a game that we feel was left off of this list, which was a lot easier when we did the NES draft because we got to the end and Super Mario Brothers 1 wasn't there, so we all were just like, oh, geez. well, it has can to be we Super on, Mario Brothers 1. Can we agree on Fantasy Star 4? Yeah. I would agree on Fantasy Star 4, even it's though on I, my list. I'm not like a super RPG nerd. I don't really dig those kind of games anymore, <laughs> but I do understand its significance and that it should be on this list, so I would agree with putting... Fantasy Star 4 on the list if we were going to do that. Okay, I guess. It sounds I'm like down we, with that. Well, yeah, Ray, if you, Ray, if Ray, Ray, didn't Ray, sound Ray. Like into it. Wait no. a minute. Ray, go with your heart. Yeah. yeah. If you don't agree, say no. I'm not saying no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so then uh, what we do? I don't feel like there's enough imports in the Genesis library, like enough no. really great imports for us to do an import round. So I would just say we should do a lightning round that is just another quick pick that we don't talk about very much, but just as like, hey, this game is awesome and it should be on the list. Twenty five games for twenty five years of the Sounds Sega good. Genesis, which I also. Got it. That's the reason that we're doing this, by the way, listeners, now that we've finished the main part of the show. Feels like something you should have said at the beginning. Yeah, the Sega Genesis turns 25 <laughs> on August 14th. August 14th, 1989 is when the Sega Genesis was, re- was released in test markets, I believe, in L.A. and New York in North America. Is that correct, Greg? You're my go-to source on this. I will say uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was really sure about it when we started, but um, it's it's getting pretty late here, so <laughs> I think so. All right. Well, fair enough. So, okay. Fantasy if it wasn't test four... marks, it was wide release. Either way, it, 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 the fourteenth is an important day. Yes. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, so we left off with Austin. So I believe, uh, Mister Host, if I'm not mistaken, we pick it up with Austin. Sure. Oh, geez, that's the worst. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't. Pass, can I? No. You, well, you could okay. wait. A, you could wait a minute, yeah, and it would go. Cheesy. That you feels cheesy. That to Ray, and it would go to Ray, and then you would drop a, a pick. But yeah, it's not going to help. It's. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'll defer to Ray. I'll, we have the rule. I'm going to use the rule. Let's <laughs> okay. defer to Ray. All right. All right. No wait. Was did we say imports were valid now or what? I would say that they're valid now, but they don't. It doesn't have to be an import. Right. It's not an import-only lightning round, but I will say that for this part, we will allow import. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, Monster World Four. Nice. That's a that's a good <laughs> pick. Yep, good pick. Pretty much like like a, like a side-scrolling version of Beyond Oasis. Like that's how top tier it is. <laughs> yeah. And it, weirdly enough, it did eventually get a U.S. release, but right. not on the actual hardware. I guess. Yeah. It, it, no, but it's easy now to get. <laughs> Yeah, it's, a, it's on. It's on all of the. It's at least on 360 and and PS3. I feel like it's maybe it's on else. Wii. It is well. on Wii. Okay, that's what I thought. That's uh, a good game. I bet part of the reason that I bought the I imported the PS2 Monster World Collection in part just so I could play that game. Mm-hmm. So. Fantastic for almost the same reasons I was talking about Beyond Oasis. Yeah, just a color scheme and the music's really mm-hmm. good as well. And just, the main character wears hammer pants. Yeah, and just just a total, complete honing of the Monster Rule formula. Mm-hmm. Like 100%. Oh, totally. So now back to me. Back to Austin. Sports? Yeah. Yep. All so right, I'm going to commit to general chaos. Nice. That, thank you. Uh, that makes my life easier because that is <laughs> one of those games. Damn. Where... <laughs> what a fun, weird little thing. What a weird little thing. Uh, a kind of squad based real time tactics game yep. i guess um yeah. unless you, you pick the you, commandos right in like, which case it was direct action right yeah. you got to mm-hmm. be the commandos directly yeah. um really cool game i i'm curious if it holds up i haven't revisited it, it in does. about four years I, okay i that's played good. it last night and it's still I'm glad super to hear fun. that cool like that like the, the drums of war really run through that game like mm-hmm. great soundtrack cool character design a little ridiculous um, but but and I really loved it. Totally awesome four player action. Oh yeah, really good four player action. I'd forgotten. Yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. Some general chaos. Yeah. That that yeah. That game <laughs> <was awesome. laughs> yeah. Uh, boy, I guess that makes it me, doesn't it? Yes. <sighs> it does. Well, I was trying to stick with Ray's no arcade ports. <laughs> rule, but the gloves I, are off now. The gloves are off now, and I gotta yeah. say, just because it's one of my favorite, it's my favorite game and one of my favorite series, and I first discovered it on the Genesis, and that's where I've still spent the most time with it to this very day. I have got to pick Ghouls and Ghosts. Oh, Ghouls. yeah, weird. Okay, <laughs> that game was great. <laughs> I love that weird. game. And so everybody, well, maybe maybe not all the people on this call know that I have a full sleeve tattoo of entirely comprised of video game characters. And I want to see a picture of it now. But. I it, the top is still some black and white. I haven't gotten it all colored in at the top yet, but I can I can send you pictures. But right on the top of my of my wrist, on the back of my wrist, is a really gorgeous rendition of the Knight Arthur in his like full sprint running position, and I just. 
it's part of my, it's one of my favorite parts of this tattoo, and that game, for similar reasons to Splatterhouse, is just, it's, it's so great. I, yeah, I, I, listen, I agree with you. I do think the yes. Ghouls and Ghosts is the best one of that series, hands down, no question. But that's not a great port. <laughs> I, you know, I think it's a perfectly serviceable port. I, I, I mean, I've played the arcade. I played, I've played it in an arcade briefly. I've played the version that's on the Capcom Classics collection, and I, I mean, again, it's not, it's not perfect, but that's how I discovered it. That's how I spent most right. of the time playing it, and that's still usually how I play it if I'm gonna sit down and play it. So, well, I guess I can't argue with your uh, youth. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like a thing a courtier says in like a, dra- a Japanese feudal Japan drama. Like, uh, there's no arguing with your youth. Yes. The most backhanded compliment. <laughs> or, or I'll never what forgive you. you. What you I, just have, so I, I don't. I know we don't want to talk too long about this stuff. This is lightning round. But I have to ask Ray. What about the port? Do you do you like take umbrage with? What what do you think it does wrong? It. it like it flickers a little bit, but <laughs> no, I mean there's there's a real lack of detail. Yeah, in the some of the backgrounds, some of the backgrounds lose. The time, yeah, the backgrounds are pretty sparse, even like the foreground stuff as well. The colors aren't quite there, I think. Um, but you know, and uh, I don't know. This is not this is not actually a problem with me personally, but people just sort of point out the fact that you know you have infinite continues, and that. To them, you know, oh, the ghouls and oh, ghosts purists. Are you supposed to be ghouls and ghosts? <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, no, I get that, but uh, you know, you'll have the purists to uh, knock that one down. Does the super graphics version not have infinite continues? I don't think so. I mean, it is a much more accurate port hmm. uh, in general. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, but also, That's like, all. Who, who can afford a fucking super graphics? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, There's I guess that. you could emulate it, but then why not just emulate yeah. the arcade version if you're going to use an emulator anyways? Well, see, that's that's my rationalization, is that there's so many other ways now to get the a more accurate version of the game that it's just wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, I wouldn't put it on a short list of Genesis games at this point. I, no, I, I thought about Strider, but I... Yeah. That's where I thought you were going. I really yeah, thought me too, actually. Strider, <laughs> which has its own problem, certainly, but... Yes, yeah. yes. So. All right, okay. Greg. Cool. Oh, this is tough. Um, see, I kind of want to say Landstalker, but we got Climax covered. I wanted to kind of <laughs> say Strider, but we just finished doing a Capcom port. <laughs> kind of want to say NHL, but I feel like that's just the <laughs> stereotypical Canadian choice to make. And... I'm not Canadian and would back you up on that. In fact, really? you're a Canadian transplant, though. So... Right, right, but listen, I grew up in, in not the inner city, but I grew up in a shitty neighborhood. I'm a black dude, and me, <laughs> NHL 94 among what? young black kids <laughs> super took off and for that year lots of my friends got super into hockey because we were so into nice. NHL 94 this is a thing that happened in other major cities in, in the country too this is I'm not I'm just saying I would support See, you to go that route and yeah. the reason I even bring it up is because it's not, I'm the Canadian thing is what I'm saying yeah but I mean around here like that was the game that people bought a Genesis for around sure. here that was our what, Madden. Was it 94 or 95 was the one where you could come around the back of the net and the goalie like wouldn't catch on, and so you could score by oh, sweeping around the back 94. of the net every time? Yeah, yeah. It was 94. Yeah, it was definitely 94. 94. Um, I'm going to have to – yeah, I'm going to have to go with NHL 94. I, f- I feel like my confidence was boosted by that story, so <laughs> – yeah. I think it would almost be wrong just, to not have a, like an EA sports, sports game, game yeah. on the list. So and I think NHL it's a final pick. So good. It's such a good choice. I'm really happy that that made, that, that made it on the list. I, uh, Mutant, League, <laughs> Mutant League Hockey was on Great my game. list. Uh, I had Mutant League on there as well, but NHL 94 is kind of like the peak of that series yeah. on the Genesis, and it's just like – uh, mm-hmm. I played hours of that game. So let's let's uh, let's sum up now that we've got 25 games for 25 years. According to this on the stick panel, the 25 best Sega Genesis games. And by the way, if your list is different than ours, that's fine. If you're angry because your list is different than ours, fuck you. Get a um, yeah. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> um NHL 94, Ghouls and Ghosts, General Chaos, Monster World 4, Fantasy Star 4, Shinobi 3, Return of the Ninja Master, Beyond Oasis, Musha, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, Alicia Dragoon, Splatterhouse 2, Steel Empire, Ranger X, 
Shadowrun, Rocket Knight Adventures, Contra Hardcore, Shining in the Darkness, Road Rash, Castlevania Bloodlines, Toe Jam and Earl, Flashback, The Quest for Identity, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Crusader of Senti, Gunstar Heroes, and Streets of Rage 2. That is a pretty fucking excellent little software library. I would be happy if those were the only 25 Genesis games on my shelf for the rest of my life, I'd probably be satisfied. Now let's throw one more monkey wrench in there. Like Uh we did. Like Like we we do. We did the first one. Yes. So everybody's got their list of five. So not including your lightning round pick, right? Right, not including your lightning round. So like Greg's list is Streets of Rage 2, Road Rash, Shining in the Darkness, Alicia, Dragoon, and Castle of Illusion. Um, So everybody's got their five. So then the question is, if you only had five games, you could only pick one of one person's list. Whose oh, list God. would you pick? Can we go over these lists one more time? Yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna recap. So that was Greg's Please. list. Joe's list is Gunstar Heroes, Castlevania Bloodlines, oh. Contra Hardcore, Splatterhouse 2, and Musha. Ray's list is Crusader of Senti, Toe Jam and Earl, Rocket Knight Adventures, <laughs> Deal Empire, and Beyond Oasis. And Austin's is Sonic 2, Flashback, Shadowrun, Ranger X, and Shinobi 3. Now, it's ter- it's totally fine to pick your own list. I thought it wasn't but, fine to pick your own list. I seem to recall it was not I, fine. Cause everybody, we, I don't remember. No, because everybody would just pick their own <laughs> list, because those are the I games think, they picked. I think, I think there was a question about that. We were like, well, you can pick yours, because you might not have got it. Yeah, so not your own list. So who else's list would you pick? So oh. Greg. Hmm. Um, other list would you pick? I'd have to go with Joe's list because it's got Gunstar Heroes. That's a good pick. And two Konami, or two, three Konami games. Uh, two. Two. Two Konami. Yeah, you didn't do Rocket Knight, but either way, no. that's a good list. Okay, Joe. Uh, I, I, I think I would have to go with Greg's because he's got Streets of Rage two. And Alicia Dragoon and Castle of Illusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though I don't really care about Shining in the Darkness and Road Rash, I don't. I, I don't really care about Shining in the Darkness. But the other four games on his list are pretty fucking solid, and, and Streets of Rage Two is totally fantastic. So I think I'd go with Greg's list. Okay. Greg. Um, I'll go with Joe as well uh, because, and I mean this in the utmost nicest way. His is pretty safe, and I think he went with some good <laughs> hardcore choices. This is a solid <laughs> glass of lukewarm water. I I don't know, Ray. I don't know if you know me well enough to know that saying something I did was safe is like one of the worst, <laughs> like most insulting things you can say to me. I want to give you credit for knowing that, but I I don't know if I can. <laughs> I was trying to temper it really well, but I mean also like. Well, compared to me as well, because, <laughs> well, I would also go for a lot more Konami games, and I like Castlevania Bloodlines. I, that's one of my sentimental favorite Castlevania games. So, you know, and the other choices are very, very good as far as, you know, for what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Austin. I'm, I'm also going to have to go with Greg. Uh, Streets of Rage 2 is a hard thing to knock, and then it's surrounded by a bunch of games that are excellent in their own rights. And you know what? I bet you I could. I bet you I could learn to love Shining in the Darkness. I bet you I could find <laughs> Damn something right there. Damn right, you could. So, <laughs> great, it's a great collection. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. So, um, all right. There you go. There you go. That is the Sega Genesis. I would just like to say that the three games that remain on my like short list, just really quickly, because this always seems to be how it ends up. Everybody just like blurts out the things they didn't put on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, were Dynamite, Heady, X Men Two, and yeah. Thunder Force Three, were sort of the last things on my. Uh, at the I had Heady. Yeah. Yeah. X Men. I played. I replayed a little bit of X Men and X Men Two last night, and I gotta say, uh, X Men Two is a lot better. Uh, but they're actually both pretty fun. Like Sega somehow locked down a lot of like really solid licenses um, and and produced games in house or with second parties um, that, that were pretty fantastic. Like the Jurassic Park game was also mm. you know pretty good. I wouldn't I wouldn't have considered it for my list, but like it's a solid movie tie-in for sure, especially for that era. Because I mean the Super Nintendo Jurassic Park game is like fucking unplayable. 
Oh god, the ocean game. <laughs> yeah, the ocean That should tell you all you need mm -hmm. to know, really. Yeah, it really should. <laughs> Anybody else have anything that they wanted to blurt out that they didn't get on? I, yeah, I mean, James. What's that? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I danced around, this feels like a weird choice, but you guys all said no arcade ports, so I kind of went with that. I danced around OutRun the whole time. Sure. Yeah. The Outrun port on the Genesis is fantastic. I considered yeah. Outrunners, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not nobody was um, considering the future. What was the future one? Like Outrun 2020 Outrun, or uh, 2019? No. Yeah, that game. No, thank you. No. Uh, I I thought real hard about Adventures of Batman and Robin. Um, yeah. Which has again a really cool soundtrack and is whenever I show anyone that game, they go from like, oh, this is going to be garbage you know, licensed port or licensed game to, oh, this is a really cool version of that Batman, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, also one that there's a Super Nintendo version and they're right. totally different. Both really cool, again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both really good and really fun, but totally different. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that Earthworm Jim didn't come up. To be, to be that's on my now. list. Because, um, again, that's one where I would say the best version of Earthworm Jim. I, well, actually, the Sega CD version Sega is probably CD, the best yeah. version, yeah. So. Yeah, I just don't think it's held up. <laughs> really? I don't. I guess I haven't. I mean, I haven't revisited it in depth recently, so I, I guess mm -hmm. I don't. Um, I when we brought in imports, I like Thunder Pro Wrestling was kind of on the tip of my tongue, but the problem is the other Fire Pro game. Like, it's kind of one of the one of the lesser Fire Pro entries. Technically, not even being a Fire Pro game because it's a Thunder Pro game, but yeah. you know, same idea, <laughs> right? Um, There's Earth, Wind, and Fire Pro. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's actually a, about a disco band wrestling as a wrestling factor. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know. Any any other final thoughts about the Sega Genesis in general? Well, we, I I do want to say I I'm going to play the role of internet commenter here and come uh -huh. up with the, the big you forgot game because mm -hmm. I can't believe. None of us mucky mucks ever even blurted this out at any point during this entire show. One of the biggest jewels of the Genesis library, if you're a hardcore person into that, talking about Herzog's Vi. Yeah, no, I, it's on my list. It's on my All list. Right. It was super close. Super close to making the cut. That and yeah. Dune too, but, but Herzog's Vi was a little bit higher um, because it's just a little more fun. So, yeah, yeah we'll get... Microsoft didn't do well on our list. <laughs> no, not so much. Yeah, they should have, but yeah. Yeah, I, I don't... Right I, that's a game that I... I mean, I feel like people always talk about it. I Whatever it whatever it is with that game, I guess I just don't see it. Like, yeah, I'm, I don't play it. I, I can't play it. I don't know why. I just can't get into it. Now, see, I thought Greg would have brought it up, but... <laughs> so it goes. I, I, if, if you, if you were, yeah, if it was like more of a, you know, give me a list of the greatest Genesis right, games, right. it would have been yeah. there. But if you're talking about games <laughs> yes, that I want to play, I like, can't. Right. Yeah. 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 And I think that's what, that's what we like to, that's what I really like about this format is it, yeah. it's about like, what games are your favorite games to play for this system yeah. as opposed mm -hmm. to like, because if, I mean, like, we could all just list off, like, the games that would appear on, like, GameSpot's best right. Sega Genesis games. Like, you know, that's not fun. Um, things like Beyond Oasis and, like, yeah. Alicia Dragoon and General Chaos aren't going to be on that list. Yeah, it's fun right. if you list something and everybody else goes, what? Yeah. And right. then you sort of spend a couple yeah. of minutes going, no, man, it's totally awesome. Here's <laughs> why. Right. Or so, I know it's terrible, but I love it, and here's why. <laughs> so yeah, happy birthday, Sega Genesis! I really feel like the Sega Genesis still like continues to get short shrift, and I think what's really weird about that is that it it, it outsold the Super Nintendo in North America for a good long while. Um, and, and you know, I guess a lot of revisionist history is like, well, it's just because it had really awesome sports games, which it did have, but like. I was never really that into sports games, and I had a Genesis, and I loved the hell out of it. And well, I there's nothing, have... there's nothing wrong with it having awesome sports games, especially because, you know, kind of this is kind of what, what Greg was going for a little bit, which was, you know, NHL or Madden is what got the system into the house, and exactly. then they stumbled onto something else they loved. You know, all of my friends who played it for Madden also by the end really did like Castle of Illusion or some other, you know, game that they would have never checked out, uh, you know, they would have never bought the system for. So if you can if you can understand the sports games as, a, you know, a, a means to a an gateway. end, a gateway drug to Genesis, 
then then I, I don't think there's any problem. Also, they're cool games. Like, NHL is a great game. Those Madden games are fun. Like, uh, shut up. Shut up. Well, well, right, right. So so that's kind of true. But, like, I will say, like, anytime you go into a thrift store or, like, a vintage game store, mm-hmm. like, there are piles and piles and piles of Genesis sports games. And, like... Yeah. If you don't have nostalgia for those games, like there's not really a value to them because like if the well, point of a sports game, right? Yeah. yeah, if the point yeah. of a sports game is to simulate the sport that it is the game of, like those games do a relatively poor job compared to sure. like you know, Madden 2015. Sure. sure. Um, whereas like something like Contra Hardcore is still relevant today because there are there is no other Contra Hardcore. Like there's no other game. There's not like it's not like modern Contra technology has pushed the envelope. Yeah. <laughs> you but know I think, what I mean? I think the other thing too that you've touched on you've touched on it a few times in this episode, which I think was a real strength of well the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. We're talking about sports as a as a gateway game and that's true. But then the thing is is that you Anybody who's even a lapsed gamer, you get to the Castlevanias and the Contras, and it, you're absolutely right. They're completely different than anything else you could play on another system. You know, or you're talking about like, like Shadowrun. Shadowrun's yeah. a completely different game on the Super Nintendo. It was created by a different group. Like, you know, any of those games, the same thing, Aladdin, and so mm-hmm. on and so on and so on. So it was, yeah. even if, if you had the friend who had the Super Nintendo, you, you still, if you had the Genesis, you could still buy and play those games because they were a completely different experience. Yeah. yeah, and I think, well, oh, so right, again, you're talking to a guy who, who does a YouTube series about <laughs> that. <laughs> um, right. But that's the thing I think that I miss the most about, like, the uh, 8, 16, 32, 64-bit sure. like, era is that like, you could, it, there would be two Batman games, or there would be two, well, actually, there's five batman games um there was there was right. little overlap in those in the last and they're right overall. and they're like they're just like that's not that like now if you go get the ps4 and xbox one versions of the same whatever game, game they're yeah. yeah they're identical you know listen aiden <laughs> pierce's iconic cap only shows up <laughs> in- <laughs> But like you know, when the Wii, when the when the original Wii was out there against the PS3 and the 360, sometimes you got a different Wii version, but usually it was just a game that was trying really hard and failing. It was to the be... same version, just running like shit. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. right. Um, and, you know, yeah, as, <laughs> you know, as opposed to like something that was really a truly different right. uh, experience. Playing to the strengths of the system, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I missed that about uh, you know about about this era of gaming and and uh, yeah I think that is uh, an important thing to talk about and yeah I don't know I uh, happy birthday Genesis and uh, a lot of the games that we talked about again I, I sort of briefly mentioned earlier when I was talking about when I got Kurt Gunster Heroes but like if people are out there and don't have a Genesis or access to one. You could be a dick and emulate everything, but um, a lot of the games are available on Steam and they're cheap, and the money actually goes to Sega mm-hmm. to maybe encourage them <laughs> to like yeah. stop making things that Shit. aren't super great. Yeah, and maybe start like uh, going back to and doing some some more. Although I gotta say, the new like as much as people are raging about the new Sonic game, it looks like it could be decent to me. Uh, I don't know. You're oh, falling boy. into the trap <laughs> every time. <laughs> Every, every fucking time. Every There's fucking always that time. glimmer of hope. Yeah. <laughs> this looks pretty good. Oh, but Sonic yeah. Generations actually was pretty okay. That's true. So, yeah, I don't know. Anybody else final final thoughts about the Genesis before I let everybody plug themselves and things they do? I'm just glad I got to be a Genesis kid. You know, I I also played a lot of SNES games, but I feel like you know it was I was the exact right age to buy into. You know, super fast blue hedgehogs and wolfmen with machine gun arms and sunglasses <laughs> and possums with jet packs. Like, the Genesis offered me those experiences that, you know, gestured towards something a little cooler and edgier. But, like, I still was just a nerdy little boy who who wanted to play video games. It, it really walked that line super well. Um, and the games are just great. So, um, I'm, I guess... Thank you, Mom and Dad, for letting me be born in 1985, which is the perfect age for me <laughs> to enjoy the Genesis. Yeah, I, um, I agreed. I was born in 82, but, you know, same sure. idea. Um, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I was one of those uh, little bastard kids who had a Super Nintendo and a Genesis, so I didn't really Spoiled have to Spoiled rotten. Yeah, sorry. 
<laughs> so you guys are all that. you guys are all babies. I was old enough to have my own money, and I just bought these systems myself. Yeah. I was past the point of my mom and dad buying me games. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I bought my own. I did. I like you know that was a thing worth saving up for. It was a yeah, it was a new Genesis yeah, game. It was well, usually the only way I got new actual game cartridges was I had to perform well on my report card, and if I didn't sure. do well, then I like if I did well, I got new games, and then if I didn't, then no no new games for me. Um, and then Christmas, and but I rented a lot. That's how I. Pl- that's like how I played so many games. Is I rented a shitload of video games because it was like two bucks to you know go to the local yeah. video store and rent a video game. And so, yep, that was the way, man. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I, man, and and I'm sad that there's not enough 32x and Sega CD stuff to ever do a draft of those <laughs> systems. But we'd run out faster than if we did tried an N64 draft. So. Uh, Tempo. <laughs> that's a <right>. Calibri <laughs> that's is the finest, <laughs> finest hummingbird-based shooter on the 32X. <laughs> uh, all right, so I think it's time for us to to get out of here. Well, again, thank you, gentlemen, all for coming. And uh, listeners, again, if you're not already reading or listening to or watching the things that these guys are doing, you should be because for all of the bitching and kvetching that goes on about games journalism, whatever the fuck that even means. These guys are doing, producing, writing, talking about some really fantastic and fun things. And uh, I think that can be lost in a lot of that bitching and kvetching and like endless news cycle about what's coming out for the Xbox One and PS4 next month. Um, so, yeah, Right, exactly. The answer is nothing. So listen to these guys talk about old games or write interesting academic things about new games or whatever they do, please. And of course, check us out at onthestick.com. <laughs> And we'll talk at you next time. Bye. Bye, Internet. Bye-bye.